Yeah. Then okay. Yeah. Any of you guys want to do the the intro? Feel free. Because I'm always Hello, doing everyone. the intro. <laughs> 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 All right, Andre, you you do it. You just cut it, my. My intro, man. I didn't know you, you were going to start right us. away. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, everybody. And welcome <laughs> to Life Share. Today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Light Share. Today, I'm joined by Don and Adrian. And we have a very special guest. Today, Josh is joining us. He's an amazing dude that also has a YouTube channel. So why don't you introduce yourself? to our audience, Josh. All right, my name is Josh. I have a YouTube channel called Embody Josh, and it's basically been a chronological journal of my art journey from when I started right after I graduated film school until now, um, with the loose overarching structure being like the steps I'm taking along the way to one day make an anime and an indie game. Um, but those are like really lofty, really like pie in the sky, high end goals. So it's pretty much just been like this windy path of trying to figure out how to make that happen um, as well as just serve as like for me personally as like an archive that I could look back on in the past to see like artistic growth. So it makes it feel more like concrete instead of just some like, oh, I guess I've improved kind of. Um, so it's like it's like a diary, I guess. That sounds awesome. Okay, that makes I me can, curious. I can <laughs> relate so much to that, to, to the I, tracking um, thing that you mentioned. I actually saw your channel a while back, Josh. Like, oh really? I, I didn't, I didn't know you were on Instagram, but I, I did see your YouTube channel like several years ago. Actually, <laughs> yeah, that's it was awesome. the, the cheetah concept art thing. Yeah, that that's the up. one. Yeah, that's the one. I that's was like looking most... that up, oh. like concept art, and then I think it popped up. So just, just a question: cool. is that, is that <laughs> the first video on your channel, or you deleted mm -hmm. some other ones? <laughs> before that no one. that's the that's, that's the, the first, first one? one i did yeah all right because um, i was just checking yeah. it now and it says it's three years old and mm -hmm. i thought i was following you ever since i started my youtube channel which is like 2017 by the end of 2017 mm -hmm. so uh yeah same as dom you know i i i remember you know back in the days that one was one of the videos that i watched as well and i love the ones where you mention uh stuff you know it's more like a motivational kind of tone, like you're speaking to the audience and your computer is like in the background behind you, mm -hmm. uh, those kind of videos. And yeah, man, I, I same as Dom, man, it's exactly the same. I didn't know you were on Instagram. I actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> noticed it like a few weeks ago. And then yeah. Andrea just says, hey, we are going to bring this guy on the, to, to the cool, podcast. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's glad to have I you here. I saw a lot of your uh, Road to Riot videos. Those yeah, are dude. Man. <laughs> road to riot yeah man no no it's yeah it's funny you say that i thought that you know so like that the how to cheat at concept art was my first video um and that was after a year of like going from starting from like nothing right um and i started it and i felt like i had to have like this pressure to be like an art god right like if you're gonna make a video on youtube you have to be like killer Right. So I was like, I got to be like Ross. I got to be like Ross draws. I got to be like, you know, like Mache Cusiero or like Shaddy with like one <laughs> pixel brush. I got to be like, I got to be like, I got to, you know, I have to be amazing. Um, and the more I went on, the more I realized that like if that was going to be my mindset, if my mindset was going to be like, I'm going to basically be a god and share what I know then I'm nowhere close to being able to have a YouTube channel <laughs> because it's like, you know, like we're always our harshest critics, right? So it's like, man, I don't think I know anything. So like, I, you know, like, so I kind of just dropped the facade of feeling like I had to be like, have it all together. And I realized that, and this is what was kind of, was kind of scary, but it was like the transition with like the, you mentioned the videos, like with the computer behind me, those were like my thoughtful Thursday videos where I was basically sharing, like you said, like motivational stuff, like just like mental health stuff that was going on because I felt like that nobody really talked about that. Um, so I kind of changed it from like, a, hey, you know, I'm amazing, come learn from me to like, yo, this stuff is hard. Like, let's like suffer together and like just offer more like, so like a, like a camaraderie <laughs> approach with the ultimate payoff being in theory that if I get good, when I get good, like hit that like arbitrary level of clout or achievement or whatever, then you can look back in hindsight and be like, oh wow, how cool for xyz to say something that i can relate to i don't know so i kind of just got off this like feeling that i had to have all the answers to just 
that we just like moan and complain together because I think that has value in and of itself. Um, and that was that happened like a year and a half in once I realized I didn't, I wasn't like pro enough to give people straight up art advice. Which to be honest, I'm a little intimidated being here with you guys and looking at your guys's art. And from my perspective, I'm like these guys are so much better than me. Why am I here? <laughs> The stuff you guys make it's is okay, so man. Cool. There's tons of guys a lot better than us. <laughs> so yeah, like we kids. feel small too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, what interests like particularly me, but uh, what makes maybe maybe we want to bring you is especially the journey. You know, the fact that you are sharing everything, and I think that we all can relate to that. And I have a huge attachment to my own um, Instagram page specifically because of that, because I started sharing it over there. And that's what made me connect with a bunch of people. Mm. And I kind of wanted to know, like, how was this transition of being, like, very expositive and trying to be an instructor and change mm. to the, hey, I'm on your side, I'm not above you. Because on the earlier videos, not that you position yourself this way, but it really looked like, hey, I know what I'm doing, follow me. And later on, you kind of <laughs> became human, right? Mm. Which is honestly where I got more interested and invested in your videos. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if everyone felt this way or if you have some people that like just let it go and didn't follow anymore or started complaining about this more human tone and mm. things like that. I think that... To be honest, so part of it was really simple. I got more engagement when I was more real. So if you're following views just cynically enough, you're like, hey, this is getting more traction. So that, that was part of it. But the other part was that I I got tired of every every video of the hey, follow me felt like a skit. Like it felt like the and I also I felt kind of fake. So like imposter syndrome times like 10, right? Um, where like I would watch a tutorial on like Gumroad or on Learn Squared or you know Schoolism or something else, something would click for me, and then I would want to go share that with somebody else. But then I, I would feel myself being like, how can I explain this in a way that's like not plagiarism, right? Because like because like all when you don't know things, when you like when you can't articulate it in your own words, it's like I almost felt like a sham because I was like I'm kind of outsourcing, you know these <clears throat> these paywall instructions. And then just re-explaining them in my own words. Like, I kind of felt like a pirate, to be honest. I was like, I don't I don't feel, like, ethically good about this. And that was the thing where I was like, if I can't say this in my own words and, like, have my own spin, if I can't contribute to this in some way, then I don't think that this is, I don't think this is a good, like, look. Or, and, like, even if nobody knew, for myself, I didn't like how that made me feel. Um, and just, I don't know, it was because of that i was trying to like well what can i add to it to make it my, you know to make it more genuine and to make it not straight up piracy um and to actually be something that's valuable and that, that came down to well this is relatable and so the whole the whole beginning thing was how can i make this relatable is i had my what beginner's guide to art and right now even now three years back that most of the videos there are super cringe for me but the value came from seeing and hearing advanced artistic techniques explained from a perspective of somebody who doesn't know art right like somebody who draws like the classic like no perspective 2d flat house on a hill with the sun on the corner of your paper right <laughs> um so then i was like well if i'm already explaining it from the perspective of somebody who sucks at art then why don't i just do that because that's more honest anyway right so really cynically you could say it was views or even just like like the ethics of it but what it really came down to is that i i realized that i, I just wanted to help people and i i it felt better to just drop the facade because every time I'd finish a come follow me video, I would feel like, like I, f I felt like exhausted of like, man, I hope that was right. I hope that, I hope that wasn't a mistake. Like, you know, because then inevitably somebody shows up and says, Hey, that's actually wrong. Like, so the first video, the, uh, how to cheat a concept art, the number one comment on that video is some dude, some concept artist in the industry calling me out and saying how my video isn't exactly right. Um, which I appreciated. That should be fine. But, and if you have, how, if you how bothered position, were you by those comments? Uh, to be honest, it tilted me a little bit because it felt like, a, like, again, the pressure was there to have the answer. If I'm saying, Hey, come follow me. You want to make sure that you're saying the right stuff. So to have somebody call me out and be like, actually, no, that's not right. It was like, dang, I didn't do enough homework. Like that's embarrassing. Like, I feel like a fraud now. Right. And like that facade kind of crumbled. Of like, I'm not somebody that you should come follow. I don't have all the answers that I postured myself to appear that I did. Um, but 
But on the other hand, it's like, oh, thank God. Like, I'm glad that somebody at least says something, right? Like, it's better that they at least know the truth now. Um, so on one hand, like, I, I was butthurt and embarrassed. But on the other hand, like, I love the comment and engaged with it and thanked him for it because at the end of the day, the whole point of making the channel is to help people, right? So if he helps them by correcting me or I help them by getting it right, at the end of the day, people are getting helped. So <coughs> put your ego aside and just be cool with that. Um, That's an interesting But it was embarrassing enough. It. it was embarrassing enough for me to not want that to happen again, right? So if I posture myself and say, this is the way you should do it, it's only a matter of time until somebody better than me shows up and says, you're actually a clown and here's why, right? And like they decon, like, and it's kind of a meme for you know, at least on Twitter, Instagram, more established artists look at people like me or, or beginner artists offering advice and they cynically see it for what it is because they have, they see through the thinly veiled reskinning of somebody else's lecture. And I didn't want to be that guy. Um, so really, I knew that deep down that I couldn't fake the, I couldn't fake my way through knowing things. And I would rather own that instead of be so insecure that I would feel like that I'm only worth sharing something if I have it all together. So really the shift was like, so which directly translated to why am I on social media? Why am I making art? Like, like if I'm only here to flex, which it feels like people are, a lot of people are, you know, if I'm only here, you know, to get clout and I, I'm not good enough to get that. Then like, why am I here? Why am I making videos? And it's like, well, I want to help people. So then put your money where your mouth is and be willing to be embarrassed because you can help people with more than just like Photoshop tutorials. Like there's different ways to help people. Yeah. That's brave, man. Like I really admire your courage, like putting yourself out there and just getting slammed. Cause <laughs> like, yeah. Take I some... kind of, I appreciate yeah, that. I actually got, I got roasted like two weeks ago <laughs> actually, <laughs> which and I can't get mad about it. Right. This guy. So I was, I'm, I'm doing live streams now. Um, I made a VTuber model because I'm a weeb and I think it's cool. Um, and I was like, you know, I'll just stream because why not? And I'll just grind and like I'll practice on YouTube. That'll be fun. And this guy messaged me and, he, and during the live stream, and I was doing pixel art at the time. And he was like, man, I don't know what this channel is about anymore. First, you said you're going to make an anime and then you're going to move to Japan. And then you said you're going to work at Riot. And, you know, I thought that saying it publicly would give you some accountability to actually follow it. But now you're doing pixel art. Like I like focus and pick a path, man, because otherwise you're not going to get anything done. And it, like, it was like a thinly veiled, like, I'm worried about you, man. Like, get it together. I want you to achieve your dreams. But it was a total roast, 100%. Um, and I kind of chuckled because, again, it was kind of like that same comment as the white shoe concept art. And it didn't, didn't feel very good. But I just laughed. I was like, dude, I'm with you. Like, you're totally right. Like, what? It, like, I thought that I was going to get a job at Riot. I thought that, you know, I was going to go be a jet in Japan. Um, and do that and to get exposed, you know, to learn the culture for making, and I thought all these things were going to happen and then they didn't happen and that's okay. But the thing is, is that people don't think that that's okay because they want to have a path. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get a degree. I'm going to get this job and then it's going to happen. And it almost never happens that way. <clears throat> so that, that comment of like, what is the channel about anymore? I basically was able to circle it back. And I think he liked it because that video had one thumbs down. And after I responded, it, it had no thumbs down. So in my head canon, I like converted him and he likes me now. <laughs> I don't know if that's related, but that's what I'm going with. Um, and I basically responded and was like, did you totally right? Totally get where you're coming from. It's super confusing unless you're like freaking Andre here. Who's been, who's watched like all my videos from the beginning, who could actually probably kind of piece together what's happened. If you just tune in every once in a while, it's like, yeah, what, the, what is this dude doing? Like, frick, <laughs> pixel art for League of Legends? What's happened to you? Um, but it's like, that's the whole point. Like, that's the beauty of the channel is that I said this in a, in a podcast I recorded last month, but it's like, I kind of am looking forward to my channel just being the futility of man. Because I say I want to make a concept art, or I, I, concept art, I want to make a video game, I want to make an anime, but I have no idea how I'm going to get there. And I would be joking if I told you that I knew how it would piece together. Like, Road to Ride is a great example of that. I don't even know if I want to be a concept artist at Riot anymore. And I spent a year with the whole playlist grinding to be a concept artist at Riot. Um, or same with Japan. Like, on, all, I won't kid you. I just, I'm studying Japanese in the morning for like 30 minutes a day-ish now. But it's really hard to study a foreign language if you don't even know you're going to use it. So I'm sitting here like, why am I studying Japanese? Am I really going to move to Japan? I'm about to turn 26. I have a wife. I want kids. Like, my family's over here. Everybody I know is, am I really going to move to Japan? Do I really need to learn Japanese to make an anime? Am I wasting my time? Like, you know, like those kinds of things. And like, I don't know. 
So he, he, he roasted me saying, you're all over the place. And I basically said, yeah, you're totally right. And that's kind of the point. So <laughs> if you feel all over the place, then come join me. Because the only commonality is like, because he's the same as me. He has a goal he wants. Maybe he wants to, you know, be able to draw his hentai. Maybe he wants to be able to draw his, you know, a concept art job somewhere else. You know, he has some goal and he thinks, you know, how he knows how, how he's going to get there. But he doesn't have a clue how he's going to get there. He doesn't. He, he can get hit by a bus tomorrow, right? Like, he could get offered something else. Like, it doesn't have to be a bad thing either, but you don't really know how you're going to get there. And I kind of get on the soapbox for this, like moving around change thing happening because that's what happened to me with like facebook and oculus and it like really like challenged me to be honest i was going to ask you about the the oculus thing yeah yeah i think i saw you mention that too like you got was it like a programming job or something like yeah that? so what happened was and this is it this seemed is like of, a I, big I, change in everything it was it's a huge change, dude. Um, <laughs> and I was kind of pissed about it because it didn't go with the plan that I wanted. So I had like two Genesis moments, basically. It's like defined who I am like artistically online. Um, the first, <clears throat> well, three, I guess. The first was in film school when I didn't care about Kubrick or Spielberg or French Renaissance or, you know, any of the, the film junkie watch party Oscar crap that everybody was like huffing. I'm like, dude, I just want to play video games and watch anime. Like, why are we doing, like, why, why do you, I don't care about this. So I was in film school with the screen with, do I want to be a director? And I was like, well, I guess I should write because if you, the script's bad, then everything else is bad. And then I was writing and everybody's writing for movies. And I was like, I want to write for anime. So I'm like, I went to college for the wrong thing. My senior year, I'm like pissed. I'm like, I spent all this time learning how to write. I just want to go back and get an art degree. So I graduate and I'm pissed. And I mean, I would do it all again because I still value being able to communicate. And that's what got me the job later. So that was Genesis moment number one. Genesis moment number two was I was a vegan at the time and back before I started the YouTube channel and I was waking, I was working at Olive Garden, the restaurant industry, and I was waking up at 4 a.m. to practice art and grind and draw perspective cubes and like, you know, I'm a college graduate. I shouldn't be working in a restaurant. Ah, and I, I was making tofu scramble, which is literally just tofu on a skillet with like turmeric and it tastes like nothing and it's awful. And I was literally crying over tofu scramble at four in the morning saying this sucks. Like, this is the pits. Like, I'm in student <laughs> debt. I'm bad at art. I have nothing to show for it. I'm broke. I hate my job. I don't like tofu. I'm tired. <laughs> like, I was like, this is the worst. Is, is that thing part in the of the world. That, that, that part of the hero's journey, you know, where the hero is exactly like at the lowest point? <laughs> and that's when I was like, if nothing else, like, I, that, that's, that's when I said I was going to make my YouTube channel. Because I was like, there has to be other people crying at four in the morning over tofu scramble like i know there has to be because people don't just you know land it right after they graduate art school or you know like there has to be some level of angst and misery hidden behind the like facade of everything being fine on the internet um and that's why i started the road to riot or that's why i started you know art and youtube and cheated concept art shadi safadi the whole thing um and then the third thing was the facebook so I, I, I'm in the industry. I went from Olive Garden to fine dining. I did YouTube because I don't want people to be miserable and I want to, you know, get better and show people what I'm improving on. But also, uh, let's be YouTube famous because that sounds fun. Like, who wouldn't want to be a YouTube celebrity? That would be lit. So, and I was also trying to, like, trying to make it as a YouTuber. And I had this fantasy. I had this dream. My plan was, okay, uh, maybe if I do this long enough, if I do enough ad campaigns, I'll make it as a YouTuber. Right? And that's my plan. And the whole thing is I'll stick it out in the service industry. I'll stick it out being in fine dining and wine and whatever else. I'll, I'll just suck it up and grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. And I will either get really good at art and be a concept artist at some industry job, Riot. Or I'll get really good at art and become a YouTube celebrity like Ross Draws. And that was the plan. And then so suck it up. Life sucks. But you know what? This is, this is what I think I'm going to do. Um, and it was this mentality of like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to get there. It's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden I get offered a job at Facebook for technical writing because what hit me was, was at Oculus, which is under Facebook now, which is another conversation we can have. But um, it was like, I was pissed because I felt like I wasn't allowed to be pissed though, because why could you be pissed that you're getting offered an industry job at Oculus? It's because it's, it wasn't what I wanted to do. It was, it was for making videos and being a technical writer. I'll be honest with you, video editing blows. 
It takes so long. It's so monotonous. It takes forever. And it's just, I've done it for 10 years. I've done it since I was in high school. I, oh, I don't want to edit videos. I want to, I want to do art. I want to like, I want to, I want to do, do these other things. Um, so to get a job doing that, I was just pissed. I was like, I don't want to do this. I would, I would rather do something else. Like, to be honest, I, I started streaming and start, stopped making so many videos on YouTube because I don't like making videos. I stream in the morning before work because I don't like making videos. I moved to Twitch and stream games because I don't like making videos. So I got a By job. By making videos, Facebook. you mean editing them, right? Yes. That's it. Yeah. Somebody else can edit. Like, balls, <laughs> man. Because what hit me it was helps that so much. Yeah. <laughs> I like, so I was in the industry and I, in, uh, industry, sorry, clarify terms. I was in the restaurant industry. I was in the fat, I was in the restaurant industry from Olive Garden to fine dining. And I had this mindset that, like I said before, if it's not my dream job, it doesn't matter. I'll suck it up. I'll grind it out. I'll just work here. And then one day I'll get out and it'll be worth it. Um, but I realized that wasn't true <clears throat> and that I was sacrificing everything in my life to be able to draw. Like I was sacrificing my social life because I worked nights. I was sacrificing time with my wife because I never saw her because we had opposite schedules. I was doing something I hated and all this pressure mounted to like, I, I basically like prioritized everything in my life to how the maximum amount of time I could sit in front of my computer and draw, which put a ton of pressure on that because it's like, if you don't do effective practice right now, if you don't get good as fast as you possibly can, then you're just suffering needlessly, right? Because I'm so miserable crying over tofu scramble, being a server, doing these things I hate. And the and it's all for the purpose of drawing art and getting better at art. Uh, and I was like, this is too much pressure. Like I'm not even having fun drawing art because I like I'm not even drawing for fun anymore. Like it's not fun. I was I, I had so much pressure because the rest of my life was on fire that I felt like that art was my ticket out, which then made the ticket out like really stressful. Um, so I was like, there has to be. I was talking with a with a friend with a mentor, and he was like. Is there something else you could do that's not like restaurant industry that you hate less? You could be kind of, could you, could you be happy? Like, so that you could actually like enjoy doing art instead of viewing it as your one hope. And I was like, maybe, but then that was frustrating because it was like, well, I don't have any free time and the free time I do have, I'm doing art, which means I would have to put art on hold to learn a secondary skill to do a job I don't want to do. Hmm. That sucks. Why would I, why would I want to stop doing art, which is what I eventually want to do to go learn, do, do something else. So like, I was like, well, I know how to video edit. So I was like, I'll look, I'll look for video editing jobs. Um, and that didn't get anything out. So then I had, I was like, well, what else can I do? I was like, well, maybe I, I know how to write. I went to film school. So maybe make it fun, like writing jobs. That didn't go anywhere. I was like, well, is there something for, for writing and videos together? And my buddies, that's basically what technical writing is because it's 2020 and people don't do documentation anymore. And what technical writers do is that they basically write instruction manuals and yeah. documentation for people inside companies to learn how stuff works. Um, so you basically make videos explaining how things work because it's 2020. Um, but how do you show that? Well, I have a YouTube channel and I learned how to make websites. So I put art on hold and I, I made like WordPress websites and learned about GitHub and did all these things I didn't really care about. And I, I was just doing it like it's like a Hail Mary, still hoping for my plan. I'll make it a riot or I'll be a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer or whatever. And then it actually worked out. And I was like, what? should I be happy? I should, I should be happy, right? This is a good thing because I'm out of the restaurant industry, but it's not what I wanted. And it was basically like getting a job at Facebook challenged me so much because I, it wasn't part of the plan that I wanted. And then it made me feel like a moron because I'm complaining about getting out of the service industry to work at Oculus. Like, who? you're so stupid. Why would you complain about that? But I was genuinely pissed because I didn't want that to happen. And then that was that was in October of a year and a half ago of 2019, October of 2019 that happened. Um, and then it was just a con then it was just a reevaluation of begrudgingly going there and being like, well, oh, well, it's a contract job. So that means I can go out and I can do YouTube in a year when the contract is up. So I have another year to get this YouTube thing off the ground. But then YouTube wasn't growing. And, it, you know, I, I realized that I was too sincere on YouTube to like, I wasn't willing to sell my soul for the algorithm. I wasn't willing, you know, either draw porn or be funny. Like my journey isn't YouTube famous material, at least not yet, maybe. So I was like, well, okay, maybe YouTube isn't gonna happen. And then I, you know, job opportunities happened with an Oculus and doors started opening. Hey, do you wanna do this? Do you wanna be a full-time position that? Do you wanna transfer and do this? Like really cool things, meeting really cool people. And I was like, shoot, am I stupid? Should I just stay at Facebook? Should I like, should I like not make an anime anymore? Like it challenged everything I knew. 
And now, a year into being at Oculus, being at Facebook, uh, and not having everything on my life burned down, and l allowing art to not have that pressure, because the other parts of my life are fine, it w it's been interesting, because I can do art for fun now, at the cost of pushing out my timeline of, achie of achieving my goals. And I'm still, right now, not really sure how to process that. Because it's like, I, I'm a hobbyist, 100% now. I went from being starving and hungry and on the grind from when I was in the service industry. And everything was focused on art and my whole life, but what the cost of everything else burning down. Now everything else is fine. I'm making more money than I thought I ever would. I can, like, I have the stability to consider raising a family and having a kid. But now I'm still looking at art and I'm like, how do you manage a full-time job in art now? I don't know. That's hard. What does yeah. that look like? I don't know. <laughs> so I've just been, I still want to do that. I still want to make an anime. I still want to make a, make an indie game, but it's just been the Facebook thing humbled me to the point where it's like, cause I always thought that something, you don't know what's going to happen. You could get hit by a bus. I said that, right. That's obviously negative, right? At the same time, you don't know what could happen. You could get a job at Facebook. Like both of those exist. And, the, and that duality, because I feel like everybody already has the default cynicism of, I could get hit by a bus, oh, ha, ha, whatever. Like, take, don't take each day for granted. Like, every motivational paster in the world, paster, right? Your loved one could die, cherish your moments with them. Like, everybody kind of has that sentiment. But I feel like that we're so cynical as a society, we don't really think of the, you could also get a job at Facebook category. People are like, nah. I'd rather prepare for the unexpected bad stuff, not the unexpected good stuff. So to get a really unexpected good thing challenged me way more than the unexpected bad stuff. It's like that quote where it's like, you know, what if I fall, right? Like, what if I fail? And like, they're on the cliff. And it's like, yeah, but what if you fly, right? Like, literally like that that duality of like, it takes just as much faith to think that something could go wrong as it does to think it's going to go right. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the biggest encouragement the past year and a half has been trying to like push that ideology of like, yeah, life kind of sucks a lot of the time. But things can also go good in ways that you don't expect. And that's okay. And like kind of roll with that. And that's what happened to me with the Facebook thing. To where now, I'll be honest, I, it would be cool. To, I'm still a contractor. My contract ends at Facebook this October. And it's kind of all or nothing. I'm either going to get brought on full time into another role. Or I won't be able to work with them anymore because I've reached the cap. Because my contract got extended the maximum amount of times. Um. It's looking well. I'm hoping I can stay. It seems to. I'm not going to promise anything. That's, that's our, but you know that that that's the situation. So now I'm looking like, well, what am I gonna? What's going to happen in October? I don't know. I don't know. What's the future? Am I am I going to make a YouTube channel or, or am I going to make a video game or an anime? I don't know. I'd like to. But I feel like that to wrap all the way back to your original question of how did that transition happen? The transition happened is that I the plan for my life fell apart. And in some ways, it's better than what I planned it to be to where now I don't know if I want to be a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer. I don't know if I if that's something that I would want um, now seeing what it's like to have this, you know, being an Oculus and Facebook or whatever. Um, and basically just saying it's I, I, the value I want to contribute and bring into the world is that it's OK to not know what's going to happen and that good things can happen just as easily as bad things. And don't take yourself so seriously because you really, you have no idea what's going to happen with your life. So just like, Absolutely. Don't, make sure your life doesn't burn down so you don't hate yourself, which is what I did in the restaurant industry, and structure your life in such a way that you can just keep going because art's too long to sprint. Because I spent the past three years trying to sprint art, trying to get as good as fast as possible because I felt behind because I graduated at 21 and was starting art at 21 with a degree that wasn't relevant. So I was trying to sprint and catch up. And now I'm here and I'm like, well, I guess I was never really behind. I guess that whole notion of like the linearity of my life was like wrong. So I don't know if I, if I could get people to try to relax about their, their plans while still enjoying what they're doing, then that's a win. Um, but that's too sincere for the internet. That's not going to get me YouTube famous. <laughs> that's way too like feel good, like wholesome, like, Oh, that's like, like for like the, like the, the people crying over tofu scramble. Right. Um, and I realized that that like embodied Josh, arm like my heart like isn't youtube famous material at least not like currently and i had to be okay with that where it's like is it okay if i make this content 
that never gets millions and millions and millions of, of views if it helps, you know, like this many people, right? And I was like, well, sure. And it's easy to say, well, sure now because I have another job is paying my bills. It wasn't easy to say, well, sure, when I was pinning my hopes on Embody Josh blowing up and being what pays my bills and being, you know, my the big thing. So in some cases, getting the Oculus job has let me be more honest <clears throat> with Embody Josh stuff because I didn't feel like the pressure to have to sell myself for the algorithm. Right. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't how say you, like, anything because I was talking. I know, I was... <laughs> I was just like so in focused, the whole dude. story. Yeah. <laughs> Same. It's so good. But dude, yeah, I don't know. Know. you're you are a storyteller for sure, man. Like what the well, hell? Yeah. I don't great. even know what, what to start with. I have so many things I'd like to say, but I guess yeah. the first one would be that I'd like one day to get to this level of flow, you know, that you have, like going mm. from one thing to another and just narrating the entire thing plus you speak super fast so it's, oh, it's sorry sorry it, that's actually no, no, advice. No. I've had it's a, it's I'm not sorry. a bad thing I'm, I'm just saying you know that i i wish i could get to that level one day because that that was I've, so cool dude and i'm glad that you you mentioned so so many of these things that i i i think we all three can relate to um Dude, I, I don't know. I have so many questions right now, but you, you've said so many things yeah. that I should have I should have been taking notes. But I'm I'm glad that you never lost sight of your goals, right? And yeah. I'm glad that you were also able to um, let's say to to welcome things that you didn't count on as mm -hmm. positive things. You know, like even though the Oculus thing was something that you never considered before and it just happened. You were brave enough to say, okay, I'm going to, you know, put this on pause and I'm going to take care of this first. And, well, you never know where that will lead you, you know, which I think it was your conclusion at the end that you never know where you can land next time. So I like this mentality a lot, dude. Much respect for everything you've said. Yeah, I'm sure like a lot of people starting out in art can relate a lot to that. It's mm -hmm. like picking which path to go on is probably like the most daunting task. Like I've been in the same situation too. Like I was bouncing back and forth, different ideas, like where to go and things like that. And then, yeah, like <laughs> it was at least four years of frustration, just like trying to figure out like where I want to take my art and everything and like mm. try to establish myself as an artist. Like that was, that was like hell, honestly. Yeah, like, it's the pits. It's frustrating, yeah. It's so hard. It's, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, life's going to throw you a bunch of curveballs. And like, it's just how you adapt to like these different circumstances that, you know, you, you're eventually going to have to like pick your battles at some point mm -hmm. and like, you know, see what works for you the best. And like, do you feel like that's route. necessary? Like this pit uh, that he talked about, like this dark moment. Do you guys I think mean, that's that's something that you have to go through to realize certain things? It's pretty things? inescapable, I feel. <laughs> like, I think everyone is going to struggle at, at one point. I mean, no one's going to just be amazing off the bat unless you're like Kim Jong-un or something. You know? <laughs> but like, I feel... I, I yeah. don't think that's even related to art only, you know? Yeah. I think that's related to like human life. It's not yeah, like everything. only us that struggle with like what we want to do. Because if you want to do anything at a high level or be like relevant in any field, you will feel that pressure of like, oh my God, I have to be high performing all the time, every day, seven days a week. Like, and yeah. well, it's it's a weird thing. It makes it you wonder like what's worthwhile, you know? Mm. Because you're here saying like, oh, I want a family, I want kids, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And well, I want that too. And to me, that's way more, way much more like, worthwhile than ha being like the top number one artist mm -hmm. in my field or like in what I do. So, yeah. Now, yeah. I, I agree. I think that just for priorities, like I feel like that when you're young, when you're hungry, um, when you're desperate, really, when you're in that pit, um, I feel like that it's really easy to become unidimensional of your 
of your dreams, of your focus, of every single motivational video and their mom is like, wake up at 4 a.m., eat two eggs and meditate and work out and then you know structure your time when you're young and when you're in school that's like the best time to grind because you don't have bills and it's like it's like go 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 and it's like yeah sure that's true like i get that routine discipline starting young like that's all valuable but like you when you said like there's priorities like when i said everything was burning down in my life when i was in the restaurant industry i like my life was art i didn't realize that i was miserable there's more to life than art dude and then like if you don't think that and life is your entire life, guess what? Your art's going to suck. And by that, I mean, your art's going to be really bitter and grumpy and angry. Like you're just going to be, and it's going to show because that's the whole shtick, right? That's the whole point. The whole point of being an artist is to get what's in your head onto the paper, to get your personality out there. And if your personality is turning to dirt because your life's on fire, guess what your art's going to feel like? It's going to feel grumpy. It's going to feel angry. It's going to feel bitter. That's an so awesome way if, to put if it. If you're sacrificing right? everything to be able to grind, Good luck drawing cute, fun anime girls. Like, <laughs> like that's going to be really hard. Yeah. Um, to where it's like, because okay, when I was in the industry, I don't know, like, I, I'm super passionate about this because I, like, I hate, I was so mad. I, I don't want anybody else to do it. So working in the industry is the, epit in the sorry, clarify terms, restaurant industry is the epitome of <clears throat> one dimensionality single focus vision because you sacrifice everything on your life to min max these stats and the stats break down like this you make more money as being a server depending on where you live because you get minimum wage plus tips which is basically double your income so that comes down on 20 bucks 30 30 20 bucks to 30 bucks an hour which is insane as if you if you can't get a job doing anything else you have an arts degree but that comes at the cost of working in evenings and working on weekends, which is the entirety of your social life. So you have friends, hopefully from college. When do they play video games? When do they hang out? After jobs, after their work, which is in the evenings, which means you're missing all the raids. You're missing the Overwatch parties. You're missing, you know, the League Five mans. You're missing all that stuff because you're working. Maybe, maybe your friends stay up super late and you close shop at 11 or midnight and you play from midnight to 4 a.m. with your buds. You can make it work, fine. But then now you're going to bed at 4 a.m. and you wake up at, you know, because you need sleep at like 11 or noon and you go back into work at three. So now you only have three hours to do art, right? So it's like the cost of, of working in the industry comes, it's, it's so high and so expensive. And that's even if you're single. If you have a significant other, when are you going to hang out with them? When are you going to kiss? You know, when are you going to hold hands? When are you going to go on dates? You know, when are you going to do stuff? On top of friends. My girlfriend works at a hotel. I can relate. For, for the it's so now. hard. It's so hard. <laughs> like, it's very hard for her to keep. Uh, basically, her only friends are her, like work friends, you know, because they have the same schedule. That's, that's exactly what it course, is. Of course, like for me, because I used to be like a freelancer for most of the time. I, I used to be just, okay, whenever you are free, we can hang out together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like it worked together. It worked just yeah. fine. Yeah, but um, when I was working like full time on a regular schedule, mm -hmm. it was we barely saw each other. You know, it was basically like every minute that we could like hang out together, we would take that chance as if it was our only hope. Because, Dude. well, oh. it was you know. That's exactly <laughs> and, right. Um, My wife. You can make it work. You know, like you have a wife, of course, but it's it's freaking hard, man. Um, and. Oh. It's not to make her feel bad or anyone that works oh, yeah, in, yeah. The, in this industry feel bad, you know, that's not the case. But like, be aware of what you're paying for your job because, well, it's the same thing for art, you know, um, you will sacrifice a lot to keep a job, no matter where you are. Like, it turns out that the, in the service industry, that's the case, you know, you sacrifice your, most of your time or what would be your free time in social life. But um, when you're accepting a job, like in art industry, be aware that it will not be like your dream job. They are, you come in, they ask you, hey, draw whatever you like. That's not the case at all. <laughs> so be aware of what you're trading off for those opportunities, you know? And yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, she, my wife was a nanny at the time, um, which was regular hours, traditionally, like morning to evening. Um, and she was also getting her, she was going to school online at the same time. So she would go, she would work in the morning and while, and so she would be gone. So I would have the house to myself, the apartment to myself, my 500 square foot apartment to myself and draw. And that was like, that was like my, that was, that was the high pressure pit I was in. And then she would stay up and do homework until I got home at 11. And then we'd have like an hour to hang out until like midnight because until she had to go to work and wake up at like six and I'd have to drive her to work because we only had one car. 
So it was just like, I'm, I sympathize with you a lot. It's hard. Even now, like at Oculus, though, like working nine to five, it's the opposite of that, where now it's like, shoot, how do you managing work, social life and love life and ambition? That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of what job it is, if it's if it's industry, if it's riot, if it's you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the company managing those four things is exhausting. To where now it's and it's so exhausting. It's making me question my ambitions of like, can I roll in my ambition of making an anime and an indie game into my job at Riot or in, sorry into my job at Oculus? Like, like could I can I can I like fold that in? Because like it gets That's people tough. always talk about a, like a side hustle, right? Side hustles are get get old. Like they're expensive to maintain a side hustle. So I don't know. Like you said, like when I was in the industry in the restaurant industry, my 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 friend, my social life went down the tubes, and they're like, we didn't really see you hardly ever. And I was fortunate enough that they were like high school and you know some college friends, like they were older, they were able to like stand that test. But you said I, I had to choose, I had to choose my wife a lot of the time because I, I didn't, I, I never had a time to see anybody. So it's hard to balance all the things that you want to do if your job isn't feeding directly into your long term dream, which I guess the only sentiment I have there is that if your job isn't feeding into your long-term dream, then the, the in my opinion, and people can disagree with me and that's fine. Um, I guess it depends on everybody's situation. But if you're, if the job you're currently in doesn't fit into your long-term dream, then you're long, you have to be okay with your long-term dream taking longer. Because if, if you try to speed up the long-term dream, you have to start burning other things in your life to fuel that fire which then is just burning the candles at both ends. It's only a matter of time until you, you know, everything sucks again. So for me, like I'm looking at that's like, well, okay, I have time to hang out with friends. I have time to do this podcast. I have time to, you know, do this at the cost of what I draw art for an hour a day, Monday through Friday. That's five hours a week. That's not nothing, but that's not a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Don't kid yourself. Art's hard. Yeah. How long is it going to take for me to get good? Probably a while. Does that bum me out? Yeah. yeah. Do I feel the temptation to not have date night with my wife to practice? Sure. Do I have temptation to slack off? Because all, we're all remote now. Do I have the temptation to slack off and do work, do less work at Oculus or something else to do art? Of course. Right? Like, So like having to be okay that it, your dream could go longer, that's hard. And so some people, some people that that's too hard. So they sacri they make those other sacrifices. And I, I, I can't necessarily caution against that because that, the more you draw, the faster you'll get, the more you'll get there. But I guess it's just a balancing game of how much are you willing to sacrifice for speed of reaching your goal? Because you don't want to show up and have everybody in your, like, not have any friends, not have any intimate relationships, and just be bitter and angry. So it's a balancing act, and it's one that I'm still trying to figure out now. And it's hard, and I feel like, I feel like anybody with an ambition, regardless of artists, anybody who has a dream that's not directly what they're doing right now, that's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's like all or nothing pretty much. But at the same time, like also, yeah, it's hard to not be like one dimensional too. like trying to like picking a path is definitely like a harder route. But obviously, like when you go down the art path, you want to explore other things, too. Like you said, you know, there's more to life than art, like. I wanted to like get into coding actually <laughs> recently, mm. like do other stuff like other yeah. than art, so I can like mix it all in. Yeah, with, like my current art journey. So it's yeah, you have to kind of like pick and pull like certain things from life, and just I don't know. It's it's just gonna be like a melting pot of things. It's not gonna be always just one thing the whole time. I feel, but that's what makes it interesting. I think. So. Yeah, and I guess some of that is what we see on social media all the time, which is like, mm -hmm. oh, this guy made it like in his 20s because he dedicated like 10 hours a day during, yeah. I don't know, 10 years. He started when he was five and he's like, his dad was already in the industry, so he taught him everything. And you got to be grinding all the freaking time. Otherwise, like when you turn 30, you actually die. Like you, yeah. you don't have 31, you know, you will actually die. So whatever you achieve by then, <laughs> It's what you like. Whatever happens after that doesn't that's, count. That's the deadline, you know. Thirty years yeah. old. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, Actually, were... like it was 25 until I turned 25. <laughs> then I yeah. realized, okay, I didn't achieve anything yet, so let's push the, <laughs> the goalpost. But um, I mean, you work so hard. Still... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, yeah, you might work hard all your life and then look back in the past and be like, "Where did my life go?" You know, <laughs> and it's like, that's yeah, it's hard. it's easy to get like tunnel vision. I feel when you just barrel down this grind path of like nonstop work. It's like, you gotta take some breaks. You gotta like enjoy the flowers. I feel, you know? <laughs> I feel like that's what's making um, mental health such a huge problem nowadays. Yep. You know. Yeah. Because you only see the good part of other people's lives and you are the only one watching like the bad parts of yours. And everyone seems so, so happy and they never struggle. It, they are like 100% focused on their path. And that leads to and comparison, like, right? To you being yeah. compared to them. Maybe uh, unconsciously, like, you know, you don't even realize that you're comparing yourself to them. And that's why you're not happy because they seem to get what they want with no bad stuff in the middle, right? And you're the one getting all this obstacle, you know, succession of, you know, it's one after another. And they always seem to, uh, what do they say? That like a butter kind of a road or something like that, like smooth silk road or yeah. something, like everything's perfect. You know, they always get it perfect. And you're the only one suffering, you know, social media, man. <laughs> Yeah. Nobody wants no, to post. Nobody wants to post their problems. I guess. So I, well, I am so glad. Sorry, you're gonna say something, Andre? Go ahead. I was about to pop off. I was about to. <laughs> <laughs> well, just just before I say that, I just want to point out that that's exactly what made your channel attractive for me, particularly. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that like I was all over the place in my head. And no one looked all over the place. And then, like, when you start to look a little bit like, oh, now I'm doing this and now I'm doing that. And inside of me, I was all the time like that. And no one seemed to, to share that feeling, you know. Is that factor so, of relatability, I guess? Oh, there's another one yeah. like me, right? That kind of yeah. feeling. <laughs> and I feel like that what you just described of the problem of social media, of everybody comparing the best of themselves or the worst of themselves to the best of other people, right? And then really enjoying and taking a lot of encouragement from seeing other people in similar stages of life and having that relatability and that struggle, right? Um, I think has more value. But honestly, mm, it's extremely frustrating. It makes sense. I get it. It makes sense. But that, old, that good, that service, because I honestly think that that type of content saves lives, which is why I make it. Right, because the person who's so lost and so confused and keeps waffling between environment design and character art to concept art to 3D and he sucks at everything and he's trying to get choose which path he needs to specialize in, um, and you know like or like whatever like anything and you find that level of of relatability of somebody else and that means so much to you. That type of content isn't popular online. That like like you just said. It's too sincere, it's not flashy, it's not polished, and you will never, I won't say never, but it, it, it seems extremely likely, unlikely, for that type of sincere vulnerability to ever pop off and be YouTube, Twitter, Instagram famous in the way that people would want. Um, because again, it's by definition not polished and not fancy and not clean and not sexy and not put together which is what gives it its value. So you're literally comparing two different sets of value. The internet values everything I just said, that whole list, which makes people hate themselves and commit suicide and be miserable. So then if you show not that, hey, look, you're doing good in the world, but you're not going to grow and be big. So which is it? And I like that, what you just described, it hits me like it was, I really had to struggle with that because I can't it be both like, man, can't, can't you help people and be encouraging and also be famous, right? Like not 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 because you like your ego tripping or you know you're wanting to you know you have a big head, but it's like if you're talking, we talked about the pain of your life's goal not being correlated to what you're actually doing. I think that it's because I, I I would kind of critique myself like Josh, are you just are you just a narc, dude? Like why do you be <laughs> famous on the internet? Like what? Calm down, Josh. Like, it's okay to not be a celebrity. What is the matter with you? And I was like getting insecure thinking I was like, like, 
am I just a huge narcissist? Like, why does this matter to me so much that I want to be big on the internet? And it came down to, I think for me now, is that the benefit of doing what you love for your job straight is it's awesome that's awesome i like i say i hate making videos i hate editing that's totally right that the first thing i would do is hire an editor like i'm sorry i hate it but like helping people through their ish and helping them chase their dreams that's what i want to do with my life and if i'm not doing that Sam. like that's why i think i am this and why i'm here right so it makes sense and I feel reasonable and I feel justified in wanting to be full-time doing that so that I can devote more time to doing that and more time, you know, not wasting time doing other things like working at Oculus or working at this, not bad mouthing my employer saying work at Oculus is a waste of time, but just that sentiment of the feeling of, of what you're doing isn't aligned with your big goal. It can feel like you're wasting time, which then goes back to the sentiment of you don't know what your goal is or that plan is and the industry might feel like it's a waste of time or Oculus might feel like it's a waste of time. Whatever you decide is a waste of time might not be. So don't be butthurt and be flexible with your path because you don't know what's a waste of time or not. Same with environment art, concept art, ZBrush, whatever. Yeah, if you specialize in one, you'll get better, but it's all going to help you. And the only reason why you're impatient, in my experience, to pick which one you should do is because the rest of your life is burning down so much you feel like you have to specialize ASAP to not be miserable and depressed. So the pressure of which one should I do? Should I specialize in this? Should I specialize in that? You have so much angst and pressure and all these other negative things in your life that you just want to specialize so you can get those negative feelings away. So it's like, okay, well, get the negative feelings away and then take your time with art, right? That's a tangent. But basically, I had to make my piece at the end of like December, literally like this past like two months ago. I was like, am I going to be okay if Embody Josh never gets big? Because of what we just described for the, what gives Embody Josh value, what gives what I'm doing on the internet value is that vulnerability and that ugliness and that pancaking and waffling, flipping back and forth and not really sure and the vulnerability and all those things that has value. Am I going to be okay with that? Not taking off for being, or being famous or being, by, by being famous, I equate that to being able to live on the internet full time as your job. Am I going to be okay with that? And ultimately I had to say yes, um, because I think that that does more good uh, in the end. But then I made me realize, okay, well, if I do want to live on the internet full time, then I'm going to have to rebrand and do something that plays more to what the internet strengths is, which is why if you see back here at that little teacup, I made a second channel called Tcaster where I just stream games on Twitch. And it's intentionally more, if I had to sum up the internet culture in one word, it would be irreverent. If you show sincerity on the internet, it's cringe. You cannot be vulnerable. You cannot be whole like wholesome is like it's not a diss but it's like almost a diss if somebody calls you wholesome you, it, you you're on thin ice you can make wholesome your brand if you're careful but you have to have enough irreverence and enough oh i don't care about this oh whatever it's just a hobby in order to make it because if you're too serious then now you're right back into the the opposite it's it's too it's too related it's too like serious people people go to the internet to escape people go to social media to escape people go like people don't want to be serious all the time. And I'm a very serious person. So and I was like, well, Embody Josh is super serious, which helps other people have with serious things. And that's fine and that's great. But that's not gonna be big on the internet. So yeah, I made find a like a up balance. Yeah. And make video games. So it's like and so where now it's like if I if I can play games and do TikTok dances and do whatever on <laughs> Tcaster and play games, and if a couple of those people and that's fine, right? Because because again I have to be careful. Nothing, I have nothing against the Valkyries and the PewDiePies and the, you know, the, the entertainers. I think that there is value and good contribution to, to people's mental health by being a good outlet when people are in dark place and you, they can just be entertained and be encouraged by a good personality. I think that has value. I don't think that has as much value as having real conversations of vulnerability, but you can't do that at the cost of your brand. So I get why they don't do that. So I think that if, if, if you can be that one level of like, I'll just use Valkyrie as an example because I, I love her as a content creator. If you can, if, if, if Tcaster could be like Valkyrie, then Embody Josh can stay the wholesome, cringe, sincere, 5,000 sub, baby, small, personal YouTube channel that a handful of people would trickle to. And that would be worth it to me because that would have value in and of itself because an entertainment does have value, you know, and laughs do matter. It, it's, it pays to have people laugh. So like, that's okay. You can be funny on the internet and not be serious all the time. 
but it's like i had to i had to, I had to literally split my brand and and start over if i want if i wanted to be if i wanted to make the internet pay my bills um i don't know if that's going to happen is that going to take off who knows I'm, like i have no idea it also makes well, things easier. Well, that you are here on the podcast, we'll make sure that you do take off. <laughs> we just got the big ad. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Just send all our followers your way. Yeah, do, we do just it. Into like two Shout followers, out. you know. Yeah, man. The, the whole no. like fifty people that are watching this. No, see, that's two the thing, of them though. will be there. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. I feel like that. Even you guys doing this. You guys are all self-aware to see the size of other podcasts and other channels online and stuff. And yet you take the time and the sincerity to do it anyway, to help the people that you know you could help. And I feel I feel like a kinship, I guess, or like a, a shared ideology of the intent to help people for the sake of it, even if you don't feel like you might not have the level of clout that you feel like you should or would want to have compared to other people doing similar things. Right. Um Oh yeah, so we're I'm no right there, no experts. With you. We're just sharing like yeah, we just our minds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're just sharing yeah. our yeah. experience so far. I think I feel that's how most people start. They just do something they love for fun, and then eventually, like it grows into something a lot bigger. But you know, our intent was never to like, yeah, we're gonna make this podcast, so we're like super huge with the other ones. But um, <laughs> but yeah, sure. we. Yeah, we we do want to help people and like help impact people. So that's probably the reason why we're doing this. And we like to keep it fun, keep it casual. So it's not like that's that's where Andre comes in. <laughs> so he, he loves it. Well, at, least, at least I have one function, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll not complain about that. No. But, I yeah. think though that I think that starts like this, beginnings like this, the sincerity like this, I think that I love when if if people like when when people content creators start like this and then they get big and you can go back and see stuff like this in time it lets you see like who they really are right before they have to be really conscientious about their brand management about the jokes they say the things they talk about keeping it lighthearted on purpose right like before before you see the the pr the necessary pr kick in once they get to that level of clout right you get to go back and see their old podcast videos that they were on or their, you know, they see, see their first couple uploads and you kind of get a glimpse into who they really are before they have to put on the social media armor and like, you know, yeah. play the game. <laughs> I totally get you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's what makes it less relatable, you know, on big podcasts. And I think I was missing that on content. And maybe that's why it was more relatable when you started to be more honest, you know. And it seems like every art podcast out there, it's someone who's like super high end professional. Mm -hmm. And then like when you are at the very like beginning of your art journey and you listen to a bunch of people talking about things that you should be like conscientious about and how to deal with the professional life. And well, you don't even know how to draw a line straight yet. So how, how will you relate to that? If there's not a mid step in between, you know, or someone who maybe he, he's ahead of you, but just a little bit ahead of you, it's enough to make you like, okay, I, I cannot achieve that guy, but this one in the middle, maybe I can get there. So I, I'll aim for that one while keeping the bigger one in mind. Because, well, we all know like Feng Zhu, right? And we all see like he, him drawing, and it's amazing and inspires everyone. But like when you see him drawing like for the first time, there's no fucking way in hell that you are going to achieve that, you know? Like, you were like, okay, he's on another level. I need to draw a straight line right here. So one step at a time. And yeah. I, in the beginning, I felt a little bit lost, you know? There, there was this one guy that uh, approached me and he kind of guided me a little bit, not uh, holding my hand too much, but gave me like some steps that I could follow. And without him... Um, dude, I don't know, like, I think I would have lost hope, you know, if it wasn't like for someone that g gave some advice to look, um, you are very beginning, you're very in the beginning of your journey. So keep calm. I know that you want to achieve the higher goal, but like, you will not get there that fast. So take it slow anyway. And there's not enough people talking about this, I think. And I feel like between the three of us, we used to talk a lot about those tiny steps every week, right? 
it, and to Josh, like that's one of the reasons why uh, we started this. It's because it's conversations that we like we were having them all the time already. So yeah, I, I feel like I'm going through to th therapy this episode. You no, know? <laughs> listening yeah. to yeah. like <laughs> all of these. <laughs> Listen it like to yeah, it's, all I'm of this watch, life I'm gonna, advice. I'm gonna watch it again yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's nice yeah, to because... hear all this from you know somebody who's who's still like going through the motions of finding their path. You know, like oftentimes we see someone who's already built and ready, but like it's nice to bring someone on who's just beginning because like we never see that perspective at all in a lot of art podcasts. Like everyone's just done. Like here I am. Yeah. You know? It's those imperfections that is what makes it a lot more interesting. Because uh, there's there's like a quote or something that said like someone whose journey is already finished is not that interesting than someone who's you know still in the process or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I feel, I feel like <laughs> I feel like the, the, yeah, because they're I, only <laughs> but, sorry. I feel like they're always <laughs> in, in process, you know, like even those that seems to have that seem to have everything figured out still have a lot of stuff that's not ready yet. They're just mm -hmm. not showing it or not sharing it uh, to yeah. protect themselves to I don't know. But yeah, and I'm pretty sure you can all relate to this, you know, because even if we feel like oh man there, this is such a mess i have to figure this out in the eyes of someone else we might look like the perfect mm, lifestyle the perfect career the perfect i don't know like you are always the idol of someone else you know even if you think you're a mess you don't know what you're doing you know to someone else it might look like like you're a master you know <laughs> and they want to be like you I don't know. Yeah. Just a quick reflection there, but I, I truly believe that, you know, because I, I, I felt that a lot of times like, dude, Adrian, that's so cool, man. And I'm like, thanks. But you have no idea how, how messed up this thing is in reality. You know? <laughs> 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 like, oh, my God, your project, is, dude, this, this is going so well. I'm like, dude, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, same here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like people yeah, I think so. Okay. Go ahead, Dom. Go ahead. Yeah, like people think we plan all these things out, like this master plan we have in our head, but it's just like <laughs> we're just playing as it goes along. You know, we're not really like we're just shooting in the dark, pretty much. <laughs> and it looks like it works, but it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, like, that's okay. social media, though, right? Yeah. Like that's you just social media just shows the shots that hit. <laughs> yeah. So. And then people believe you, but. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like you, you can't it's it's hard when you hit that milestone and go backwards. You know, it's like it's hard to do that, <laughs> you know. Like revert back into your old ways, I feel like you have no choice but to go forward. But <laughs> it's like losing your professionality or I guess or something like that. Like people are afraid to go backwards. So <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm still kind of figuring out um, my stuff because, for instance, I wanted to show this level of transparency. You know, I just want to put myself out there just the, the, the way you did. And I came to this conclusion that, you know, people don't like to see someone doing bad, for instance, you know, like, mm -hmm. hey, guys, yeah. I just had this problem. I'm trying to fix it. This is what happened. You know, it doesn't have to be anything personal. It can be something related to even, you know, art, for instance. Like, mm. look, this is how this painting was looking in my head. And this is how it looks <laughs> when, when I, I try to, to make it. And it, it doesn't work. So I'm frustrated now, blah, blah, blah. You tell the story. And at some point, <clears throat> I came to this conclusion that, you know what? What if they don't want to see this kind of stuff? You know, what if they don't want to see the bad part of this like why would someone want to see the bad part of it they 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 want to see the cool stuff right they want to see the the victory they don't want to see the failure so why should i put that out there and then i have some other moments where i kind of convince myself that that's what people need to see so they can understand that you didn't nail it the first time you tried 
you know. So I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle there. I'm still trying to understand that concept, but yeah, I I, I just wanted to mention this because I heard you mention something like that uh, about you know showing your showing yourself like vulnerable in that sense, mm-hmm. and I think there's an audience for for anything out there, you know, and yeah, for everybody. I, I think you kind of pay the price as well for like. I don't know about you, but at, from one side, you do want to look very professional because you do want people to kind of like respect you for the professional that you are. And you want to attract um, clients or um, other professionals to like look at you as one of their we- equal, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I feel like sacrificing the um, the honesty in your like artwork and the way that you portray yourself like how much do you sacrifice to look more professional is something that i'm i'm really thinking about a lot these days you know because to, to a certain degree i feel like people look at me as um with less experience and less um as less capable as i feel i am and I think that part of that is because my whole story it's on Instagram and like you can see every single bad drawing that I've done out there. And like if you scroll back like far enough, you'll see like very ugly shit, you know. <laughs> but yeah. and also like I come here and I make stupid jokes with you guys like all the time. So maybe they look at us and like I'm the stupid one. Mm-hmm. And to, to a certain <laughs> point, you know. I don't mind that because I feel like that's me being honest and true to myself, and that's how I act in like that's what real I was life. Say, if you know yourself, and like, you know, me, like I do this offline the... as well, so there is no mm-hmm. point in hiding yeah. it, you know. It's but, be authentic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that... uh, what's the balance, though? Like, how do you bring up that professionalism and say, "Hey, when it comes to work, I'm pretty fucking professional," and. Yeah. Every like other avenue of my life, yeah, that's like where I'm kind of the fun guy who doesn't I take himself too seriously. That's that's kind of what my my first video of this year and the latest video on my channel is about. You know, about staying true to yourself, and I'm not saying not care that you don't have to care about what other people think about you, but you don't have to make that kind of illusion that you portray in your mind. You know, because at the end of the day, you don't know what people think about you unless you they, they tell you, right? So mm-hmm. those are only like ghosts, I would say. Those images you make in your mind, you make up in your mind about what they think about you. And that becomes your reality. And that's kind of distorted from the real reality. You, you Are you getting me? Like, yeah. um, I am, you don't, but you I don't feel really like know. one of the units, so if you know yeah, but one worth, of the units of measurement, it's the engagement, isn't it? Yeah, but how accurate is that? You're talking about social media, right? Yeah, mostly. So yeah. I don't think likes translate into how how much you're worth or how much you know or how you know. Yeah, yeah I would. I, I would. Know. If I could jump in for a second, I would sure. think that no. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you know, keep going. I'll, I'll, see you. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> no, I think this that um, it, what you what you described, I relate to a lot. Um, you, you know, with the whole like my entire channel too, of like you know the transition of being professional versus being relatable, and I have one hundred percent gone on the relatable side of things. Um, so I thought. But then I get a job at Facebook with my YouTube channel of relatable being the key capstone of my get of getting the job. <clears throat> and that was kind of like a highlight for me. I was like, you realize I'm like making like frozen meme jokes in these videos, right? Like you realize like I use anime gifs all the time, right? Like that doesn't seem like Facebook level like quality, right? And I was kind of I was surprised. Um that that would happen, but it turns out because I was I was talking to my to my manager, my boss, and she said that the big reason why I got the job was actually my personality and the skills that I was able to show and communicate through the videos that I made designed for that particular audience. So a blend of my personality 
and the ability to target an audience was enough to get me in the door and then and their test that they gave me of hey make a do that for, for the interview they were basically asking how would you how would you simplify this right how would you explain this um so i i had to basically take this information simplify it and then basically write them out like a storyboard like a script of how i would make a video explaining this complex information and simplify it um and showing them that i could do that context switching was i think was enough to get them through to get me through the door um that i can you know i can meme on the internet with anime gifs but i could also you know talk about super complex vr stuff um but to the question of like okay well how relatable versus how professional do you go and andre with your plight with your instagram where you feel the sting of not having potentially the respect that you feel like you deserve because people see your earlier work. Um, I think that that's I'm valid. not saying that I'm a huge professional, though. Just oh, to oh, clarify, oh, no, I, I get you, I get you, I get you. No, 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 I'm, not, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying your head's huge. I, I get it. What you said is totally reasonable. Um, but I think that... I mean, this is this this is why this is why I made a second handle, right? I think I think this is this is why people have art stations and people have Instagrams. I think this is why people have different outlets and channels so that they can show the parts of themselves appropriately um to the point where like i like i'm i am an artist all the time i'm, I'm always going to be one and i i kind of like the idea of making really fun like animations or little gifs or little like animated shorts based on like video games that i'm playing or something like a daily life or a comic or something like that right and that's like up here that's polished that's a, that's a that's a polished executable deliverable that you can build an entire brand off of. If you make a webcomic series, if you make a bunch of animation shorts, that's something that you that is that is at a certain level of polish. That's not a drill. That's not a botched drawing. It's not a relatable something. It's it is an executable, deliverable product that could be monetized, right? That that that's your rendering. That's your you know commission. That's your fill in the blank. That that's your sexy stuff. That's the stuff that you're proud of, right? I'm gonna be posting that to Twitter, on under that handle. I'll also be posting it to Instagram. But Twitter's only going to see the stuff that's really polished and good and sexy because that's what the internet cares about. And if somebody wants to see more, then they can go back and they can find me here and they can find a buddy Josh and they can see the bad perspective and the bad proportions and the bad boxes and whatever else. But I feel like that I feel like that if you're if you're going to make it as a professional and get the respect that you genuinely authentically deserve, not because you have a big head, and which basically comes down to brand management, I 100% believe that you have to have your own separate crap account your your doodle account but to to value it highly um because i don't think that i think that because we, we can't cut ourselves we can talk about being idealistic and encouraging others and helping others and and you know doing all these altruistic things uh being you know relatable and helping people with tofu scramble whatever whatever but the other day people are shallow people don't have time people are cheap and you know it can be hard especially as a freelancer, to make that bread. So do what you got to do. So yeah, help people. But there's nothing wrong in having a part or a brand of your self that's professional, that's tailored in only that. Um, and for me, that's that's pretty much, that's the T-caster thing. And, I, and that took all the pressure off of my Embody Josh thing, where it's like, okay, I'll, I'll continue. My Embody Josh will be my, will be my trash authentic cringe account. Which is, is who I am as a person. Like the, of all of all the online personas, Embody Josh is, is the most real, right? But because of that, because of that, I won't be big. Embody Josh, I don't expect to be big on the internet because of that level of cringe, sincerity, authenticity, vulnerability, all of those things. And I feel like that if you have a brand, if your brand online right now is a mixture of trying to be relatable but also be professional, if it were me, and if I could start over, I would definitely split the brand like really early on so that you can still so you can do both um andre it kind of sucks for you because you're a, you already have an instagram with a bunch of followers and you don't really want to purge <laughs> your older stuff so now it'd be like painful <laughs> that said this does not apply to our case because you're you are already screwed so <laughs> no it's always salvageable like you can you can take your older posts and, and recreate a new instagram account right I'm just, and just throw that just in your bio. Too, dude. um yeah i appreciate the thought actually because well thinking at the another level like it doesn't need to be everything on one social media right so that's why some professionals have instagram and art station and like a bunch of different things and they don't post the same content over there i think and... i think that you need that i think that i mean that's why people have multiple twitter accounts 
which is kind of silly. Like even like any streamer, content creator, athlete, whatever, they almost always have a personal account. And I think that's fair. And I think that I think that we live in a world in a society. We're in a society. We live in a society that it's expected and okay for people to have a personal account and people don't really get, per you know, now if you, you know, shot racial slurs on your personal account or, you know, do really sketchy things and bad things on your personal account. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll trickle up to your main account. But I think that at least in internet culture, it's expected and okay. And nobody's really surprised if you have a more personal account where you post your more personal things separate from your main sexy brand that you like are trying to make money off of. So I think that I think that that's probably the most straightforward, best of both worlds way to go about helping people while still being able to flex and still be able to actually show that you're, you know, I don't want to say worthy of being listened to, but if we're being honest, my story has a lot more credibility. Your guys' story has a lot more credibility and your words have more weight because of the accomplishments that you've that you've made. Like my story hits different, in my opinion, because I got a job at Oculus. And because I'm not still in the industry, in the restaurant industry, I still think what I say would have value, but I think that it would show that I, at least I'm do I'm the fact that I made it to Oculus and Facebook would suggest and give the impression that I'm doing something right. The same for you guys. You the dog is so cute. You would, <laughs> he just came you in. know, it gives the impression that your that your work and your words and your practice methods are working because look at their art, look at the clients that they've worked with, look at the stuff that they've done. So, and so that's just human nature. I don't think that's a bad thing. And if anything, it just holds you accountable because if you if you talk all this crap, but your life doesn't reflect it, then people aren't going to trust what you say. So I nice. think that I think that having that crap, having that having that flex, having that brand for me right now, it's oh I work at Oculus. Oh for you guys, it's oh you know I, I work with these clients. Look at my portfolio. I make really cool art, right? I think being able to have that sit on its own shelf and be able to own that and have a healthy amount a healthy amount of pride and respect for yourself for hitting that is fine and then you can shit post and you know do your motivational be vulnerable or whatever on your on your other one i think i think you could probably get the best of both that way that's what i'm currently doing <laughs> i have a separate account for just my personal blog but for that like i don't care if like it blows up or anything that's just the way to express my true self exactly if, like, no one else sees so okay adrian we need to to <laughs> your accounts as well. We're the only ones. Yeah, only I, I, I don't know what to say on this topic because I've always felt like, you know, in in my case at least, I'm I'm speaking about this at a personal level, right? In my particular case, I feel like everything belongs to this brand that is me, you know, which is mm. the intention that I started all these accounts with to mm. just put myself out there. That's why my YouTube channel doesn't have like, I actually changed the name, you know, from the nickname that I had before to my real name, because the channel is not necessarily only the art I make or, you know, any kind of thought that I have or, you know, it's me, it's who I am. And uh, my intention was to, to be me, you know, as much as I can and yeah, and share as much as I can about that. And in my case, I don't have that feeling, that urge, that necessity, that need to open up like another account. And I think I, you guys were talking about this in some other calls we had about mm -hmm. like posting, for instance, stuff about my dog, right? Like pictures, videos, or anything that I come across that I find interesting or anything like that. They were like, dude, the dog is part of your your project, man. I think that's entirely fine. You know, you don't need a ne another account for that. Mm. But I, I definitely see what you mean. Um, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just, um, well, I feel like I've been bringing up this subject a lot lately. Like, mm -hmm. I think I did it on the last podcast as well. But it oh. seems like it's almost like a maze, you know, like where we are trying at least I am trying to find a way out of this social media game in a way that is like positive for me. And I separate myself enough from that. So like, I don't have a personal account. I don't feel the need to have one, mm. but then like at the same time, if you, if you listen to people that like really understand the subject and like marketing people that only deal with social media, right? You have to 
you got to have um, at least some level of personality. So you cannot be a, like a robot just posting like amazing stuff all the time. So it's like show 10% of your personality and then you see people that like show 100% of their personality, then that's too much, you know, like then like you became too human. So, and I mean, for us, of course, that's nice for us to see your dog and you walk around and stuff like that. And Dom like going on a bike ride. But I think that it's almost like we don't count to each other because we are already friends, you know? So it's like, mm. the, it um it takes away the that aspect of like we cannot see our own accounts as if we were, we were just fans you know yeah because right. like my account I, my account i raised that only on sketches and whenever i post like a sketch or like a line drawing on paper that does like way better than anything else and it doesn't matter like how well rendered something is or how well designed something is if it's mm. not a sketch it it will like plumb down you know and I feel like with personal things, it would be the same. And I think, I think well, you I'm, a really good point. Yeah, I'm just trying to yeah. find ways, you know? It's not like I'm trying to find an exact answer. It's just like, okay, let's talk about this and try to figure it out. Because at the same time that Adrian said that he like the, his account is him, earlier you were saying like, oh, uh, people don't want to see the fails. So it's like, okay, but you fail. So... Like, is, he, is it you or is it you only the successes or is it you only the fails or is it you both worlds or is it you with the dog, without the dog? With, I mean, I know it's a bunch of things that I'm throwing at you and I'm not trying to challenge like the way that you see things, but I'm no, trying like to figure this. it out. That's all, you yeah, know. I, I like that you said that because it's exactly what I said earlier. If you watch the video again, I said something like, I'm trying to do that and kind of trying to find a way because sometimes I feel like people don't we really want to see that you know and it's it seems like I kind of hold myself back from making public certain personal things because I believe not that they are too intrusive or anything like that or oh I'm exposing myself or anything like that no it's it's more like what will they think you know Will they unfollow me? Because this guy is always posting crap, like always sad stuff that's happening to him. And, and, you know, and I'm like, dude, why would people want to see that? The reality is that it's always a 50-50 kind of thing, you know? You're not always sad. You're not always happy. So it's pretty balanced, really. Now, which parts of this whole big picture, which is your life, your um, day, your week... Are you tr uh, are you choosing to, you know, make public available to your audience, you know, to see? That's up to you. That this... That's what I'm having trouble with because I never know where's the limit. You know, where is that limit between what I show and what I keep to myself, right? I think, and it's I'm not like... talking about the obvious, uh, the an obvious answers. You know, there's obvious stuff that you're not gonna show, right? Yeah, intimacy don't post nudes okay, okay please <laughs> i like you but not that much <laughs> all right we're gonna keep those private all right <laughs> but that's the, that's the only fans dude come on yeah right <laughs> oh shit i should never <laughs> i should never <laughs> bring that up <laughs> but, no yeah. i think that i think that you're basically just talking about brand management right mm -hmm. which is yeah. like what what is my brand and how can i be consistent within that and establishing a clear consistent brand for yourself damn so, right like, andre i really like what you you know, you summed it up where it's like there's a ratio of how much because you want to, you don't want to be a robot, right? Um, so if you you can be an art guy, and then you can say okay, ninety percent is going to be the polished, sexy stuff that you know gets me jobs and that you know is basically my flex, and then five percent can be personal, like you know my anniversary with my girlfriend, or I really like this tree, or you know some mm -hmm. something, and then five percent could be a really like an art mishap, right? And then you just stay consistent with that, and then you build that brand. Yeah. Um, so like when you say like, well, what part of myself do I want to show? It's like, well, just be consistent with what you're showing. And then the, the brand will take care of like the brand will take care of itself. So like body Josh is it's any, anything related to an, in, to an indie game and an anime, which basically comes down to anything that's artistic. Um, and like Oculus fits into that. So if I get brought on at Oculus or change job titles or go a different company, that'll be on Instagram. That'll be talked about because that fits into that journey. Um, 
but I don't, I don't, I don't talk about my wife that much. I don't really talk. I mean, I show the dog for like brownie points because everybody loves dogs, and dogs are like cutes and stories. Um, and I, I, I made a post when we got the dog, but even then, that was like in the context of like work, like working at Oculus and like working with Facebook and stuff. Um, so I feel like the, I feel like that the the need <clears throat> for for creating an alt account is if you are trying, like if you're channeling your inner YouTube personality. Um, and, and you're wanting to do more of a vlog style. Um, if you don't like, if you don't really feel that urge or basically if you feel yourself conflicting with your, if your personal life feels conflicting with your professional life, then maybe make an alt account. But if you don't really feel that pressure, then I think that identifying how many posts can you make of yourself that are not related is probably fine. Like Andre said, like one every week, one every two weeks, you know, that's not your usual fare. But I feel like, I feel like for you, Adrian, if you, it sounds like that you have a lot of stuff that you want to share that's not art related. It sounds like to me from an outside perspective, because I haven't, you know, I've met you an hour and a half ago. I think that it sounds like that you would really benefit from having another, another account or another brand um, where you could talk about things that aren't specifically just art um, so that you could keep getting, and then like, you'll still have art on the other account probably because like, that's a big part of your life. Um, but I don't know. It sounds it sounds like that at the very least you have a lot of things you want to share that aren't art, and you're really wrestling with that. With that oh yeah. Friction. I I've actually um, been like uh, my way of learning uh, English was to just record myself, you know, and uh, during those recordings I would just talk about anything. So that eventually evolved into like um, like an offline show that has no audience it's just for practice and yeah it helped me get going you know and and you know flow better in conversations and stuff but i never published those anywhere and this is what i told dom and andrea a, lo a lot of times that dudes i have hundreds of hours of myself talking about anything you know narrating my life and that's also for only fans <laughs> it's for nobody i've never posted that anywhere and I i've been you trying to desire work to post it yeah yeah but i again that kind of insecurity of hey i'm not sure if this is right to to be out there not, i think you should you know, post it man. and it's not that I, I say things that are too crazy or you know offensive or yeah. anything like it. i'm just narrating my day you know and i just find that kind of I don't know. I, I don't have a word to describe it, but uh, I've been trying to work around this issue. Like, for instance, on my Instagram, I tend to post on my gallery only art-related stuff, and then I have the stories for the personal stuff. Mm -hmm. For instance, you know, it's not, it, it doesn't have to be that way necessarily, but you know what I'm saying, right? So uh, and then I thought about YouTube, for instance. Oh, okay, we can have playlists, you know, for each thing. Mm -hmm. Because initially, I thought about having like a different channel for different stuff. And then I thought, isn't that splitting like too much? I don't know. And these are thoughts that were kind of coming through my head but back then. And um, yeah, I, I, I keep posting stuff to the same channel and I don't think it's, it's within my plans to make another channel, but I don't know. I'm glad you guys brought guess, up this point because <laughs> it, the it's- The question it's, I would ask from my for perspective is that Mm -hmm. Is it a goal for you to make money off of your internet handle? If it's a goal to make money off of your internet handle, then there has to be a lot more thought and care and intentionality with brand management. But if you're, if the general goal is just to help people and to be useful, and you're not really trying to make it online, then yeah, just throw it all together. Have it just be a giant mosh pit. Have it be a giant thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, yeah, I feel, I feel like that that's the big question. Um, and I feel like the more followers you have, the more that question weighs on your mind because you don't want to piss them off. Um, that's easy. I have like 300 followers on Instagram and a handful, like one of them is my mom. All right. So it's like, I got like no pressure for, you know, for pissing off people really. It feels like, um, but it's like, I, I, I get why you would feel hesitant about that. But I guess, yeah, like if you're trying to make money off of it, I think that building different, because that does seem really random compared to like, oh, I do art. Oh, hey, but also I have these recordings of me learning English and it's really helpful. And I think it could help you guys. So I made a website here with them all and you can go check it out. Link's over here. 
So you can you can so you mm -hmm. you can plug your other stuff, but just have it be separate from, you know, like your main your main one. Like I don't know. I guess the, yeah. The biggest question is, do you want to make money? Yeah. What, what's your more, what's your goal? You dilute your brand with this account because yeah. Embody Josh is really diluted, like really diluted, because the umbrella term of of art and or making an anime and making an indie game with how many branching paths I've had. Like I, I've done pixel art, I've done line art, I've done painting, I've done environments, and photo bashing. It's super diluted, so, and 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 nothing's popped off, and that's why the channel hasn't grown. I've spent I've spent two thousand dollars in ad revenue, like the past three years, you know, trying to grow the channel, trying to you know trying to gra get this audience, and the audience I got. That's why like the closest thing to a brand a body Josh has is motivational. That's mm -hmm. the closest common thread you can kind of put through everything. But as soon as I make something really sexy, if I make like a really hot animation like it's bomb like it's killer i'm gonna be the animation guy and people are gonna expect whatever pops off whatever oh, pops off right. people are gonna expect that's what happens right? with the viral videos right exactly that so like and that's all why, the followers that's what people, you like, get expect you to deliver that kind of content all the time and if you don't yeah. they they kind of leave <laughs> yeah i think that's why like figuring out the process is important because yeah i think without a stable process it's hard to like consistently put out that same content but yeah it, it does get hard to find that process in the beginning like i don't know <laughs> i've had a struggle with that for a while too so uh, i struggle with even the thought of having a, a stable process you know <laughs> like what if you don't want a stable process what if you want to like you're you just want to experiment all the time I think it all comes down to yourself, man, because yeah. what works for me might not work for you, right? And vice versa. I'm sure there is like a universal formula, like a structure to get to this goal that you have. But sometimes it's just as simple as that as what's your instinct in, in this situation? You know, what do you think? You know, you can listen to experts and to people who have been there to the place you want to go and you can try apply the same things they did you know uh, this reminds me of this uh the shadi safari video with the mountain climber thing yeah I'm not sure if you guys dude, have seen that. that yeah like Rule hey dude awesomeness, if you're law of awesomeness or whatever exactly <laughs> something like that yeah exactly so yeah you can if you want to get up there there's people who have been there before you know you just follow their trails and that's it if you want to explore your own, that's going to take way longer and you may not even, you might not even succeed, you know, you, you may, you may waste your time trying to find a path that leads nowhere. So it's up to you. That's the, the adventure, right? Who are you laughing at, dude? It's, it's true. It's like, what do you... I'm laughing at because like, we, we started the conversation with like, there's no right path. Every path is a mess. And we are all over the place all the time, everyone. And they're like, <laughs> there's a specific path that you can follow to achieve your well, goal. Well, there's no, like, it's always... Both, it's definitely uh, I, both. I know, like... Yeah, yeah. I know yeah, it's like, like, in, like, I mean, like you can, you can You can apply this to, to art school, too. Like, so I was in film school, right? Which, by principle, is controversial. Because it's the question of art school. Do you need to go to art school to make it as an artist? Like, people ask that question all the time. Or even, even in game design, should you go to a game dev school if you want to be in game design, if you want to be a game dev? Um, and the something something one of my like the leads in my film program said is that you don't need to go to art school. You don't need to go to film school to make movies. You don't need to go to art school to make art. You don't need to go to do those things to make it happen. But it'll get you where you're going faster. And I feel like that that's the same sentiment Shadi Safadi said, where it's like, yeah, if you want to get better at concept art, then learn about photo bashing and learn about 3d and learn about exactly these it's about speed so it's like you know. it's like it's the because what, what we and we talked about this before in the beginning of the podcast if you if you're if what you're doing to pay your bills isn't your dream speed is the question that you're trying to answer and how much are you willing to sacrifice for the rest of your life and the other areas of your life to get that speed to get that drawing time to get that whatever so yeah, if you don't have a lot of free time, you're going to be really focused on the hacks, on the photo bashing, on the free perspectives of 3Ds, of the, you know, the references and all of those things, because time is your most valuable resource. So I feel like that, no, there is no, there, there, there's no right path, but there are best practices. And I feel like that there has to be both for that. Um, and that artists can bristle because they artists are 
prideful, I think, because they like their process and it makes them unique and they're all of these things. But like there are best practices. And yeah, if you don't want to do that, fine. Like piss off, do whatever you mm -hmm. want. It's your life. But this has been proven to work. And if it's your time and it's your life, and if you want to meander your own way or your sensibilities don't let you learn from other people or use references or whatever crap you're telling yourself because you're young and dumb, fine. But if you want to get better faster, there's people who can tell you exactly what they did that can put you in the right direction. But yet at the same time, yeah. viewing that as the only way to get there. Mm -hmm. And then I guess as a, as a final sum up to cap up our, our conversation about social media and offhands and brands or not, I think that a really, really, really simple way to answer that question is what would you show an employer if they want to hire you? If you were to apply for a job at Riot, if you were going to apply to a job at, you know, Binox or, you know, Ubisoft or just pick a company, what would you link in your application? Would you link them to your Instagram? Would you link them to your art station? Would you link them to your YouTube? And I think that answering that question for yourself would help you be able to show what you should post where. Um, and for me, I like I for whatever whatever next job I have, I'm gonna make a website showing that. Um, which and, you know, it's pretty easy to just get a Squarespace thing or Weebly or WordPress or whatever. But like, what are you gonna show employers when you apply for a job? Or if you're a freelancer, where what what where do you redirect clients? Like the information about your rates and past work. Like where do you show them? Where do you redirect them? And I think that that probably should answer a lot of questions of what you should post in what area and website. Like, cause I have, I have an embodied Josh website, like embodiedjosh.com. That's just a summary of like who I am as a person. This just shows like my most recent stuff. It's like a high level overview. And I think if you answer that, I feel like the rest of it is depending on your aspirations of becoming a YouTube personality or an internet personality. So that's at least for me, that's what I've found useful to draw the line between. Well, that's an interesting way to put it, man. What would you show them? You know, where would you redirect them? That's interesting. Yeah. Show everything. Awkward, <laughs> awkward silence. All of it. Hey, here's my dog. <laughs> Give me a job. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, I think it's that 50 50 balance of like, you know, what to post or like what you want to show. You know, et cetera. Obviously, you're not going to show every single thing, but just like, what is most important? Like, what's going to help bring value to people in some way? Um, it could be in your day to day that brings value to somebody. Like, recently, like someone told me, like, "Hey, I like your nature videos. I'd like to see more of that." <laughs> so, I'm like, sure, yeah, I'm definitely down to post that, like, on the side, you know. Um, but my art account stays like my art account, mm -hmm. like the profile on the the front page, like. That's what you're gonna see. I feel like each social media platform has like a like a pre-established purpose, right? And I feel like you can turn any of those into you can change that purpose. You know, for instance, you you can you can make I don't know Tumblr be your portfolio website or Instagram. You know, you, you can make your Instagram gallery be your portfolio. You know, the thing you redirect. Uh, to people that want to hire you or I don't know. I think I think you that can... this is where we get in I think this yeah. is where we get into best practices versus options where it's like, yeah, you could you can make Tumblr your 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 portfolio or you can make Instagram or you can make Twitter, right? Hmm. Twitter portfolio would be difficult, right? So I th I think that there is freedom for that, but I think this is this is exact this is a perfect uh parallel. Yes, perfect parallel to like what Shadi was saying about the people have done things and gone before you and you can learn from them. So it's yeah. like, what have other people done to show their portfolio? Like, why does ArtStation exist? Like, hey, what that's now ArtStation th th that's, and Instagram. Yeah, that's not how you use that yeah. tool. This is how you use it, right? Like, yeah, if you exactly. want to do that, and, ArtStation could be better. You know, if you want to do yeah. that, then Instagram could be better. You know, like, but hey, you like, like, the, like stick it to the man. If you don't want to, then piss off and make <laughs> Twitter your profile and just hey, tweet. If your it works art for you, you yeah, like exactly. Yeah. There's no wrong way. I feel to do it. It's just how you do it. <laughs> well. Like how you curate your stuff, you know, there's like, I don't know. There, there's a lot of like people trying to tell you ways to do this and that this, on Instagram. Like the... This reminds me of the conversation about like, which software should I use for this or that? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's, it... what social media should I use? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's I more think like it, yeah. it, it's about the tool, man. It's about how you yeah. use it, you know. Uh -huh. So it's like your work is gonna be the main spice, you know. Hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter like which social media platform you use. Yeah. It's like, Sorry, there's... I said I said I said it's about the tool. It's about you and how you use the tool. <laughs> yeah. So. I like when, when there's silence too. Yeah. <laughs> it, come oh, on, man. It's, it's a, been an silence, interesting conversation. Pause. Silence is a great indicator of comfortability in a relationship. You know, like, you know you're going good with your date when there can be a silence and you don't piss yourself. Right? Like, first couple dates, there's a silence and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm like, say crap, this is so awkward. She hates me. She's never going to me again. I'm such a loser. And then, you know, you get there and you, you realize you're both just chilling on the couch, you know, browsing Reddit or like, you know, hanging out and you're like, Oh, hey, we're chilling. I don't know when it happened, <laughs> but all of a sudden, the silence became comfortable. And like, once you hit that point, you're like, mm -hmm. that's like a sweet spot. And then you have to be careful that you don't become complacent and you like, don't actually, you know, like ignore each other. But like, once like the first time silence becomes comfortable, it's like the best. It's been so like, it's nice. <laughs> but... Now we are going to start another episode on relationship advice, Josh. <laughs> so. Perfect. Let's yeah, let's go. This isn't yeah. just an art channel, so or an art podcast channel. Wow. Let's come back I and see. talk about what's it like to date. What's it like to marry an artist? What's it like to date an artist? <laughs> Artists in love. <laughs> er. <laughs> I see that as the equivalent to taking a break, you know, from all the noise and all the action in life because sometimes you feel bad for that you know just the same way you feel that urge to feel that that emptiness that that silence in a conversation with some random words the same way about taking a break you know like i shouldn't be taking a break i should be doing something you know and i feel like pff, yeah that's a big no-no you know respect sleep breaks and there's more to life than art just like shut up i so yeah. much of the art <laughs> on the internet are high schoolers and college kids jacking each other off and thinking that they're the yeah. best and that and, they're gonna and, get the job or they're gonna, you're or, or you're or you're, you're, I'm working. Or you're like a salty industry pro <laughs> right it's like just yeah. calm down yeah. calm down stop just shut up i don't know I, it tilts me the art industry yeah. tilts me um, Do you guys the, watch guess, oh, sorry, a lot of the art, the art internet, art internet, art Twitter? Yeah, like, do you guys watch a lot of like art YouTubers or things like that? I did because I don't feel like I watch like almost no. any of those. Yeah. <laughs> my 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 saltiness isn't directed towards individual content creators. Like, I feel like a lot of the a lot of the really cool people I like on like uh, Marco Bucci, um, I yeah. mean Chai Safadi. Um, I mean, every time, every time Marco Psycho, Bucci releases yeah. a video, I, I have to watch it. And that's once every three months, I think. I feel like that's the sweet spot, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch it every three months. Wow. That dude, <laughs> because he doesn't look, release. You are working with. Yeah, he doesn't release more. working with art, like, mm -hmm. more than 10 hours a day. Like, you want to relax and watch more things about art? Like, that's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about, uh, well, I think me and Adrian earlier, we were talking about like people who like sketch after they do a personal piece. Like it's just art after art. They replace their breaks with art and more mm -hmm. art. It's like, what else do you do? <laughs> you know? I don't like, know. Other than that, hey, I mean, if I, you're excited about that, go ahead. But, but if you do yeah, it, whatever, out whatever of... makes you happy. Yeah. To an extent, for me, at that I would I would go crazy. I have a hard time. Something that I really struggle with is like perfectionism. And if I don't, if I if the art piece isn't going well, I struggle to enjoy the process. And I think that's a vice, um, because I view art as a tool for communication uh, compared to a tool for self-expression. So for that sense, but then like it's also self-expression too. So if I'm expressing myself poorly, it feels terrible. So I view art as a job. I view art as work. Art is not fun for me. Um, I maybe it, maybe it will be one day when I get to like my comfort zone and I can draw my cute fan art or a comic or something like that and not have to like be sweaty all the time trying to not suck. Um, but that's something that I personally struggle with. So the people who draw 
all the time, draw for work and then draw for fun, do whatever else. And they like to derive genuine joy from drawing. I'm a little envious, to be honest. Um, I wish I wish I had that mindset. I wish that I did. Um, I don't know if I ever will. Uh, I feel like I'm too young in in my art journey to be able to to speak confidently on that. But at least so far, my art has the closest I've gotten to enjoying it is like when I'm doing like perspective exercises, it feels like Zen. It feels like chill, but not to the point of like, man, I can't wait to like be done and go draw some perspective cubes after work. Like, no, like, you know, and it's not even <laughs> yeah. like, man, I can't wait to go draw the fan art of, you know, the new Zelda game that came out. It's like, oh yeah. So I can make it look like hot poo poo. No, not looking forward <laughs> to go embarrass myself with my fan art that looks like trash. Um, not even that anybody else says that I think it's that way. So that's something I personally have to work on. Um, and enjoying the process of actually creating more um, for the sake of it. Because if it's, if, if it doesn't yeah. turn out well, I don't, it's not fun. So art is still very much in the work camp for me hmm. currently. Hopefully that changes. I'll keep you posted. But yeah, I can't. I have to like schedule time to do art and it's like scheduling time to do a chore. Or like scheduling time to work out. Like it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I think it has. You just mentioned like two things that I do for fun, you know, art and <laughs> working out since then. <laughs> Dude, I, I was going to say... You know those things that you value? Yeah, they suck. <laughs> no. I think I mean, it no, probably I mean, has I'm, to do... I'm jealous of you, man. I would be... I would be... I would be hotter and I would be better at art. In other words, I would be Andre if I liked art <laughs> and, and liked working out. But I, I hate working no, out and I hate sucking at art. So... You know, like that's something that I'm trying. I I personally have to improve on. I would say it probably has to do with the meaning. You know, it has for you to you, because you know, to some people, working out might be like hell, something awful. You know, I hate it, and to some other people, it might be like a super enjoyable experience, right? And you know, same thing with art, probably. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, I, I relate more to Andre in this case. Like, I uh, this is my jam. You know, I have a lot of fun with what I'm creating. And I think it's because of the meaning that w what I'm creating has to me, right? The fact that it's a personal project, the fact that I know where this comes from. It's not for no one else than for myself. That's a different story probably when you're working for a client, you know. But even then, I think... If you get into that project and you you kind of relate to it or something, if, if it's something you enjoy, then yeah. If it's something that you're working for someone else and you you can't seem to connect with the essence of that project, it's going to mm -hmm. be a, an awful experience, I think, you know. Okay, so I have a question then. I have a question. Okay, sure. When you guys, do you enjoy, because I said, if if I don't like it, if the project isn't going well, if the art that I'm trying to make, the fan art, the anime girl, whatever it is, it's mm -hmm. not going well, I tend to get frustrated and I'm not enjoying the process. Do you guys, when you're doodling, drawing, doing whatever you want after work, after client work, on your own time, do you still enjoy art and creating when it's hard and when it's not coming together and it's not turning the way that you want and you don't have the tools to know how to fix it? Because if that's true, that's Hell amazing. Yeah. And that's Hell really yeah. inspiring. If that's okay, not have... true, then that just makes me feel like that, okay, so that means you're working within your comfort zone. And once I grow up and I'm older and wiser like you, then I can have a comfort zone that's as big as yours and enjoy and want to create within that. But I feel my comfort zone is the size of a pea. No, no, no. So don't, everything I make is outside of don't it. Don't get me wrong. It's not comfortable. It's just the result that comes after what's fulfilling, I think. I you was know. like a runner's high. Interesting. Oh, yeah, like you're. It's it's almost the same thing as you, when you work out. You know, it's it's this awful yeah. moment of pain, and then you get the gains. You know, <laughs> then mm. you know I, when yeah, you I finish. I feel like working out is the perfect analogy. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's direct. It's pre, It's physical. It's visible. You can mm. see it. You know. But I think it's the same thing with a painting or with any kind of project like that. You know, design related. You see the results afterwards, and you're like. Hell yeah, I made it. You know, I, I never thought I was going to make it this far with this concept or whatever it is you're working on. But I've definitely felt that a lot of times. Like I was doubting either this succeeds or fails. I don't know. Sorry. Honestly, I don't even know what to do anymore with this concept, you know. Uh, and, and maybe you come so. back later and you keep pushing and somehow 
Uh, there you go. <laughs> I drew this face today. It's awful wow. looking, you know. Mm. And I did not hate it myself for drawing something that awful, or this See, I body would. that I a would. messed up. And well, but here's the thing, you know. That's one of the positive points of having that Instagram account that has like a bunch of bad drawings. It's because I'm not like embarrassed anymore for this. Mm. So when I do this, I don't care about the drawing specifically. Mm. So as an example, I don't care for that. Uh, that rap on the gym or like that set or that day on the gym. Cause that's not like, it's the same thing that you said about tracing a line in the social media. You know, I think that the way that you set that in your mind, it's a way that you can set that really to, to, to art or to like any particular goal that you have mm. where the enjoyment is in the fact that you are progressing and not the specific activity. So like when I'm on the gym and I'm lifting weights, it's not the like, the fact that you are lifting weights that is nice is the fact that, I mean, you are lifting like one kilo more than the past week. So that's, mm. so you are enjoying the progression and not the, the, Do you know what it is? the act itself. You, know? you just broke my life. Do you know what it is? When you're a self-taught artist, when you're in a little vacuum. I'm sorry. Uh, in, in a little echo chamber, chamber, and you don't know what that one kilo improvement is. I finish something, I look at it and I go, I don't really like it. I never really get that runner's eye. I never really get that thing, that like satisfaction. Except for maybe like, so, like, so this this little teacup back here, I drew that. That's that's not bad. That's, that's kind of cute. I'm cool with that. Fine. Right? But I could probably count on maybe one hand the amount of things I look at and I'm like, eh, okay, good. But the multitude of I don't really like this and I don't really know how I could get better. And I feel like that when you're self-taught online, which is very popular these days because screw going to art school and going in debt and the internet is all that you need and you can do everything online. And I don't, I don't know, I'm this giant hard on people have for self-teaching themselves on the internet. The reason why I wanted to be on YouTube and to start on the internet in the first place is so that people could get that feedback if they did improve a kilo or not. Because I, I feel like a lot of times, I feel like I would enjoy art more if I knew and had somebody telling me that I improved. Not, not to make me sound like shallow or like I need constant affirmation, but it's like, am I getting better? Like, is it obvious? Like, am, am I wasting my time? Right? Like, and this might sound silly, but like, so this week I was doing perspective cubes and I realized that my line weight was getting better and it was really small and the lines were straight and it was sexy and they're going great. And I was like, that is a good cube. That's hot. I like that. That's like, that's good. Right? Like, so you're saying this, you know, like you, you, the one kilo better. I, I felt that this week I was like, okay, that's a, that's a kilo. I see that. Okay, mm, good. Like little gem. Like let's keep going. Like throw it in, you know, like my fuel tank to drive my car to keep going and keep grinding and keep, you know, practicing. But I feel like those little gems of like, aha, I see it. I've improved. See, look, ha. Huh. I feel like that that's really hard for me, which is why I started the YouTube channel. So I look at it. I look back. I look back at art from a year ago, and I'm like, I'm I'm kind of the same. I don't. Am I am I lifting heavier weights? I don't know. I feel like what you said, the payoff of, of once you finish the piece, you get the satisfaction of being like, oh, yeah, I crushed it. Turned out great. I like it. And that's awesome. But I don't experience that. And then the even if it's not awesome, but you know, but you know what? At least at least I lifted a little bit more a kilo. I don't really know if I have that either. And I feel like both of those, and I don't think I'm alone in that. And I think that both of those issues could be rectified and remedied if you had a mentor or a teacher that could tell you and direct your eye and like, breathe that life into you. But that doesn't exist on the Internet. That's really hard to do because that's that's valuable. A teacher to mentor you and tell you that stuff, like you have to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, right? Like that's not free. Um, so I, I, I feel like that that alone is probably a justification I would give for people going to art school because that feedback of that justification of knowing that you've improved and knowing how you can make it better and like to encourage you, I feel like that that's the part that I've been missing the most in like my artistic development that I think... <laughs> It's probably don't, don't, don't worry, dude. Like God just entered your room, and oh yeah, <laughs> you should be fine. God and I are tight, dude. Holy Spirit's here. We're chilling. We're. we're I feel it, man. Guys, that's really bright. Right, here, hold on. Let me change that. <laughs> you have some unique ways, Andre. <laughs> Cannot there contain myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it was like all of the sudden in the in this specific moment. <laughs> <laughs> he spoke, right. but uh, yeah. but yeah, yeah. man. Um, yeah, go ahead. 
I don't even know what to say. I just wanted to confirm, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just say, yeah, like my, uh, yeah, my mentor just shat on me. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of times I was gonna. I, I miss yeah. that. That's awesome. Yeah. So I feel like it's it, both at the same time, you know. Like you were wrong and you're shit, and here's why. But there's hope, and this is how you, exactly. you get it. So <laughs> yeah, so there's a way. Like it's tough love, but you know, it's it's worth it in the end. I feel like to have somebody who's who knows, like, more experience has gathered knowledge in their time and shares it with you is, like, super valuable. Because, like, yeah, I was shooting in the dark for, like I said, four years. Like, I didn't know what to do until my mentor came along. And then he just pointed out, like, you're doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, and this wrong, and this wrong. Scrap everything and do it over again. <laughs> and I was like... like Oh, like, everything was like, alive. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it, it was like it was really like humbling for him to just like point that out because it's like if I hadn't taken his advice, like I would have gone down the same route I've always been doing, and that would just be like I would be lost. So mentors are definitely helpful. I feel yeah. I think it doesn't hurt to ask like just DMing someone on Instagram. And asking them to take a look at their work, like or your work, for instance. <clears throat> but it takes plus. just to get a new <laughs> perspective. Well, on your um, stuff. I relate to that moment where your mentor kind of shed on you because I told you guys like I made it like I spent six months doing a portfolio, a generic portfolio, like with everything from environments to creatures to characters, and I sent it to like three guys, and the three of them said, "Hey, this sucks. Do it better." <laughs> Kind of like roughly in that way, you know, not specifically like that. Yeah. But, um, and it sucked, honestly. Like, I felt like shit. I posted the portfolio, and two weeks later, no piece was on my portfolio anymore of that project. See, but that's great. Not that, a like, single the... one, like from 30 pieces. See, the good news is, though, is that like being able to have somebody tell you, no, you're not there yet, but then continue to show you and help you and not peace out of your life and, you know, be willing to help you with that. Like I had, so before, when I, I knew I was going to quit the restaurant industry, um, this is before Oculus when I was like trying to figure out that other skill, right? And I, 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 I had a friend at the time. He was a, he was a 3D modeler. He was, he was an artist. He was, he was on the art team at Microsoft on halo infinite which still hasn't come out at the time of this recording which is bananas so he's in there and he's working with all the artists he's, he's an artist on halo infinite and his wife is uh, a 2d artist at uh like chucklefish or something some other game studio so they're both industry artists uh, and i was friends with them so I, I went over them and i talked to them and i basically did like a portfolio review and they basically just shat on me like you said but we're like, no, you're not anywhere close to being ready for the industry. And that was that. That was it. There was no offer of mentorship. There was no offer of continue. There was no offer of you could do this better to improve. I mean, like they roasted it and showed all the floor, all the shortcomings, which I could then, I still remember some of the notes that they said, right? But there was no extension of, let me try to help you grow in this. It was a, you should do this instead. Like you're not ready, do something else instead. And it's like, hmm. <laughs> that was just like that was just demoralizing yeah that was just like that that wasn't helpful at all that was like it was helpful to know that i wasn't you know i wasn't gonna go apply for concept art jobs and embarrass myself right but that that's about all it was good for um mm -hmm. so yeah but having having somebody but i just recently had an experience on twitter i cold emailed this guy on twitter for a consultation and then he was like hey yeah you're a beginner and i was like ooh. <laughs> um, but the difference was is that he pointed me in the right direction gave me some resources and then i messaged him i was like hey like would you be down to do like another consultation in, like a month and let me know <clears throat> how i've done for the, the things that you recommend he says yeah sure you know just hit me up when you're ready for another one so i'm like okay so you know what i'm an adult it's gonna cost me money it's gonna cost me his consultation fee but at least now i have somebody who's willing to give me feedback like that mentor that i, I mentioned to actually help with that. So I'm kind of optimistic and, and excited. So this month I'm doing like a bunch of cubes and perspective and, you know, like construction and forms and stuff. But yeah, I feel, I like, feel like having some, a mentor to be able to actually tell you stuff is extremely is Isn't it sort of like a reformation of what school was actually supposed to be? 
Because yeah. then like you you get someone who actually knows what he's doing and then you learn from them. And then like you gather a bunch of people that know what they're doing and you put them in a place and you gather a bunch of people that want to learn from them and put in a place. And that's what the school yep. is supposed to be. But then yeah. like the prices increase so much and they got teachers that are like need to be a bank for the buck. So they don't know as much as the people like that really yep. know what they're doing. I mean that's, that's why the school is schooling's value a little bit. I honestly, I have, yeah. a, I have a really hard time with school because I think that what you just described, getting a bunch of experts in a room and being willing to teach people is worth the money. Good teachers are worth their weight in gold, 100%. But like you just said, there's a sentiment, and this is, I, this is, I might get in trouble for this. There is a sentiment that those who can't do teach, if you're not good enough to get in the industry, if you're not good enough to be an art director, if you're not good enough to do whatever, you'll just go teach instead. And the thing that's frustrating about that sentiment is that it's half true because people have had a lot of terrible teachers and out of touch teachers. Um, but at the same time, that's also really offensive to good teachers who aren't in the industry or are only there for a short time. So I don't know, like what you just said, like, I really like, I love school. I love academia. I'm bummed. I graduated college. Like I really enjoyed school. It was really expensive and I'm in debt and I hate it and that sucks. But the concept of learning and having teachers and teach you stuff like is amazing, um, which is why I did the whole YouTube thing. But even then, my time is limited. So people, you know, message me in my in my Discord and they're like, "Hey, do this portfolio review," and I'm like, "I don't have time to look at your portfolio <laughs> and tell you you don't know form or perspective because that's all the notes are because nobody values form or perspective because it's boring and lame, right?" So it's like it's it's it takes it's expensive to tutor somebody. It's expensive, time wise and money right so it's like so it's, it's a hard problem to solve so yeah we're, we're we're over here huffing about how great it is to have a mentor but it's like obviously like n nobody said it wasn't but it's mm -hmm. just the, the unfortunate reality is that it's awesome but it's also really hard to find and really rare um and i think that's the strongest case for school so i guess if you want to go to art school find a specific teacher that you like and go to that art school and have that teacher teach you yeah sometimes it's hard because like you don't get a choice for teachers yeah. at times yeah but, that's what i did actually for my own education like i learned from books up to a point where i thought like it was decent for me to take a class and then i looked that one teacher like where would he taught and i, I only took one paid class ever and it was with that teacher because i liked mm -hmm. his work and not like the school in general or anything in general and it, it was not a personal mentorship it was the closest thing that i could get with one arts that i admired mm -hmm. and i mean it kind of worked but it was not like a personal mentorship, of course, and as beneficial, yeah. beneficial as a personal mentorship would be. But yeah. <laughs> I think maybe this is a sign, guys. That yeah, is see, look, at the, look at that bonding. Look at that comfortable silence. How long do these podcasts go? We've been talking for two hours. I thought you were going to wrap up after an hour, but we went for like another one. Yeah, um, uh, I was about to wrap up but like right now. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, we're I, still I, going. Hour three. Oh, my God. Uh, I can keep going as as long as it needs. <laughs> you know, we, we we don't really have, like, a, a specific time uh, yeah. for how, these how long these episodes last. So, it's usually more tailored to whatever it needs, you know, whatever the subject is. But I, I really like this topic about mentors and all that stuff. I, I recently got into teaching as well. And... It's it's, I gotta say, man, it, it's it's a weird mm. feeling to to be in a place where you you used to see uh, those people who you learned from, basically. You know, like now I'm teaching as well. You know, it's it's Same, I don't know, <laughs> just to see your students being your students is, is is such a such a feeling I, I don't know how to describe it i have no words for it it's just like ah uh, just like fulfilling you know in some some way so it's because you're giving back to people so it's, yeah it's, yeah it's, I, I don't know i think i i i i i will have that issue that you mentioned josh about like what's that point where it becomes not viable anymore to you know, to teach this kind of stuff to so many people, right? So I guess that's where you get into different kind of paid methods, you know, to balance out the amount of time you spend with uh, people and 
to basically get paid for that, get something in, in exchange. Because right now, all I'm doing with my social media, and this is just to go back to the question about, are you doing this to get famous on the internet? What are you intending with your account? I have no intention of getting like, you know, lots of subscribers or anything like that to make a living off of my uh, internet accounts. But I think that it's also beneficial to have a decently large uh, following mass because imagine one day you want to release your own stuff somehow, you know, and there's no audience for you to, <laughs> to notice that. Nobody knows you, right? But if uh, you have like a significant amount, then you have more chances of successfully founding uh, your project, whatever it is, you know, like, yep. see, and, and this is our case, for instance, you see Dom release his uh, project Journey to the East last year. And dude, he's only been going uphill, you know, it, ever since like- It helps. Now he's on <laughs> his project. second one, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, if, 100%. If, if there was no one there. So I'm just saying this because that's also one of my focuses, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm mainly doing it because I like it. I like to do that. I like to share my stuff. I, I like to talk about my stuff. And, and I love, ex especially when I see it's someone relates to what I'm talking about and what I'm mm -hmm. sharing. But then, of course, I would like them to be aware that I exist and that I'm working on this because they could potentially become uh, clients in the future, you know? Yep. I'm saying customers. clients and, and customers. customers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so. yeah, that's exactly why I did the whole second brand thing. As soon as I realized that Embodied Josh wasn't going to be as big as other branding strategies could be, I was like, well, because like if I want to make an anime in any game, that's likely going to start with a manga, right? Or a webtoon or a light novel before it gets adapted to anything. So yeah. you're, exactly, you're exactly right. If you want to, If you want to make anything original, Having a following is like fantastic. Like, so yeah, having, I totally get the value for that. Yeah. Cause it's um, easy for, for you, people. Even, to... even, if, even if you're not a personality, but just like having, having something to plug, having people that already like your stuff. So when you do put something out, they have, you know, you mm -hmm. already have some people looking at it. It's super helpful. Yeah, Cause it, it's all, it's always that thing. What I think about when uh, some people bring up the subject that why do you need so many followers? You know, why do you care about that so much? And, and you're like, look, I don't, I don't really care that much, but it, it feels like that could be really useful in certain moments, you know? So it's not like, like I live <laughs> to please people, you know? I live to do my own thing, and if they like it back, then that's like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's, that's the, the consequence. That's the result of, of that thing, you know? <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's... I don't know. It's tricky, you know, because every case is different, but that's ultimately the way I see it. And uh, it's pretty sad that some people are blind to that kind of thing because they, they believe you made it, you make it out of um, like you're a narcissist or you're, uh, you know, something like that. Yeah. Like, oh, you, you really care only about the, the likes and all that stuff. Yeah. I can piss off. If it's you know about... what you're doing there shouldn't be no problem with it i think it's like the community aspect that's like what's more important like focusing more on building a community rather than just focusing on the follower count and like mm -hmm. exactly. making an impact in the community mm -hmm. that's how it's, it becomes more fulfilling because if you just focus on like how many followers i can get you can get stuck within that cycle but just like how can i grow my community to impact this specific community, you know, like this mm. niche or something. Yeah, because like even if down. you have like a hundred thousand followers, maybe only mm -hmm. ten thousand of those followers are truly committed. Maybe even less than that, you know. So it's, mm. I think it's rather about the the quality rather than the quantity here, or like the engagement yep. with yep. your work rather than just the likes. So if people are good. like, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say I found I found a good percentage for engagement to be twenty percent. If you have twenty percent engagement, you are like crushing it, like statistically. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you have twenty percent like ratio on to followers, that's like you're, yeah. Teach you're, me, you're, man, because I get nowhere close to that. Dude, I heard like think... the saves and shares are important on Instagram. That's oh, what yeah. people have been saying. Like the yeah. 
Okay, well, some insider. So I mean, it's not insider knowledge, but because that's actually super illegal. Um, oh, common knowledge Facebook on the uh, has the knowledge. <laughs> common, <laughs> common, Googleable, searchable knowledge on the Instagram algorithm is <laughs> frequency of posting directly translates to visibility, which is a little sinister but understandable. Um, and how uh, how active you are translates to how easily your posts get seen. It used to be that if you posted a lot the algorithm hid your stuff because it was viewed as less valuable because you had all the posts all the time so they wouldn't push it as much so you were encouraged to post fewer so it was perceived as having higher value so the algorithm would push it that's no longer true because people were doing that so now since they want people to use the platform all the time the algorithm seems to be that if you are active every single day posting doing a story doing a post doing a reel doing a whatever it is um it's it's seen for more people so it's pretty much just be active all the time forever which has seen a lot of people move over to things like Twitter and ArtStation. And personally, my bias, I I personally value Twitter as the highest form of social media, even higher than ArtStation, just because of the accessibility for influencers and people who could give you jobs. Um, so I've been focusing on the Twitter wrong highest. one. <laughs> Instagram, Instagram personally, I think is is much set up more to be like a personal curator blog. Mm -hmm. And that's been furthered by the acquisition of, you know, Facebook, which is all about, you know, because you're linking your Facebook accounts now. Your Facebook friends are on Instagram. Messenger can work with Instagram. They're, they're making it much more intimate and personal for you and less so much businessy, y brandy. Um, so Twitter is still very much Twitter walks that line really well between personal and, you know, public facing person. Yeah. Like, business which is why you have a personal account and a public account on twitter so i i personally have found i valued twitter the most um even though that typically results in less engagement so somebody with like a million followers on instagram typically only has like you know six hundred thousand seven hundred thousand on twitter or something like that um but i for i personally found and seen may, way more success stories with twitter and people like employers asking for your twitter handle when you apply they don't ask for your instagram they don't ask you know they ask hmm. for your twitter or your portfolio so i i've i personally value twitter the most Hmm, that's really interesting to hear, man. Yeah, because I was I was kind of surprised, you know, to see some really big accounts on Instagram, for instance, with a few hundred thousand followers that only get less than I don't know ten thousand likes per per post, and that doesn't mean that that's the reach they have because the reach and the likes are something are different things, you know. Yeah. But still, you know, the amount of comments, the amount of likes they get. And you're like, why? Why are they getting so like this? They do not. They don't correspond. You know, they don't. The numbers. You're like, what? So it's it's weird. You know, whenever I see someone get that kind of level of engagement you mentioned, like around twenty percent, thirty percent, sometimes even fifty percent, I think that's crazy good, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think about it, though, it makes sense because on Twitter, you're on the same playing field as like the president of the United States. <laughs> and like Elon Musk, right? And it, it gets you out of your it gets you out of your little small ooh, concept art is the coolest thing in the world. Yay, industry. Like it the world is so much bigger than that. And you have mm -hmm. like tech leads and narrative directors and art directors and producers and like every everybody who's anybody is on Twitter. And it like it's kind of like you jumping from like your small little pond to like a big lake or the ocean, basically. Um, and that's why I've, I've seen a lot of art content specifically get less traction because, yeah, you have pockets, you have art Twitter, game dev Twitter, black Twitter. Like, there's always like it's not quite like Reddit, but like the people you follow tend to be you can get insular echo chambers on Twitter. But because of that, because it's so interconnected and there's these different <clears throat> ponds that's not clearly as defined as subreddits and as Reddit is, but the subdivisions are still there it means that those likes have more value because of the possibility for them to transcend different demographics than just art. So if somebody retweets it, but they're in, you know, if they're a part of black Twitter, game dev Twitter and art Twitter and politics or like whatever, all whatever, whatever you care about, whatever you're into on like retweets, like the, the potential for exponential growth and impacting a wide variety of people that aren't just artists is higher, which gives you, so like, I don't know. Twitter is terrifying. People lose jobs over Twitter. People like Twitter is extremely powerful. Um, I have found and with Instagram being acquired by Facebook and that being more and more 
realized Instagram seems to be much more of a mm, more of a personal thing um, with because that's the intent of Facebook. That Facebook's mission is bringing people together and being friendships and everything else. Um, yeah, at this not. point, Twitter seems to be almost like a must, you know, in in social media. Because I, I, if I remember, like pretty much every, Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but pretty much everyone on, on, let's say YouTube, for instance, you know, they, they kind of use Twitter to notify their audience about whenever they're going to release a video or to do like polls or whatever to find out what their audiences want them to talk about in the next video or stuff like that. You know, very rarely you see them say. I'm going to drop this on Instagram, on my Instagram, you know, make sure you follow me on Instagram or stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess it makes sense, you know, for some reason, Twitter, Twitter seems to be the go to for these things. So it makes sense. I don't know, maybe. it. Yeah, in my case, I've been using Instagram since the very beginning. Twitter is more like a. I have one, but I, I don't really use it. I've been posting some stuff there and mostly they're like bouncing stuff from my R station, you know, every time you, you yep. upload a new project, do you want to share this somewhere else? And I'm like, yeah, I, I take everything there's uh, right there and, and off there go. And that's it. But yep. yeah, I'll probably start focusing more on that as well. <laughs> you just never know. Yep. Well, Hunter was meditating. This was a great podcast. I have enjoyed being yeah. here with you guys. Thanks so Dude. much for the invite, Andre. Thanks for all your insights, man. This was like it was awesome really to interesting have you, man. To hear your whole story, like oh yeah, from beginning to end, <laughs> like all the bad moments you experienced, all the good moments. It's like good to hear that. Yeah, thanks for That's putting yourself thing. out there. Yeah, yeah. I feel the... like this was a very different one. Mm -hmm. right. Ah. Great. <laughs> in a good no, way. No. I hope. <laughs> in a good way, dude. Because um it's a it's a different vibe, you know. Like the same thing when we when we had uh Christian here, you know, because he's not like yeah. as focused on art as like we had we have been for the past years, you know. Like the fact that you presented the fact that the that you can have a, a life outside of art and still do art. It's a, I think more people needed to hear now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of, I, I'm a hobbyist right now. Right. So mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's the reality. So maybe that'll change. I'd like that to change. Uh, for work right now, I'm actually, it's kind of funny. I'm making a world in VR chat, like for like Oculus and stuff. Like I'm doing like, it's like, like my job now. And I'm like, Hey, art again, like this is lit. So like, I, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll find some it would be nice to do it not as a hobby but right now because of where i'm at i'm forced to have art as a hobby but it would be nice to to graduate from that at some point but yeah seeing you guys seeing your art gosh i was a little intimidated i was like you guys are so good oh my, what am i gonna talk about like, <laughs> <laughs> perspective cubes that's like all i have oh, man. don't worry man like these that two accepted me in the group so <laughs> anyone can join oh, wow that means a lot, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was I was genuinely interested in, in your journey and your uh, career, you know, your whole story. Um, and Sorry. I'm glad you, you've you been sharing this stuff with us. And yeah, we, we wish you the best. Uh, I hope we stay in touch. And yeah, definitely. Yep. And it's it's been a cool episode, man. I don't know. I have this feeling of like... Yeah, that was, that was awesome. You know, <laughs> that's what we strive for. I, I don't that's, know how to. That's what I, we do. I can't. I can't really put it in words, but I know you guys get it. So Your storytelling abilities, man. Oh man, yeah. Absol that's awesome. that's awesome. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactely. Like I appreciate not a kind of you to say. talk cohesively like throughout. So that's like <laughs> makes you engaged. Like that's why we were silent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was a little self conscious. I was like, shoot, I'm talking a lot. My wife is going to watch this episode. She's like, I'm going to watch it once it's out. And I'm like, dude, I guarantee you she's going to tell me I talk too much. I guarantee you. He did, he did well. Don't worry. I'm, Don't worry. I'm not, he did well. I'm not going to lie. I was noticing that too. But in a good way, I'm like, I hope he doesn't mind, you know, that we're staying yeah. silent yeah. And, and he's talking. That's something I, I need to work on because I don't, I don't, I don't. 
I could easily dominate a conversation and overshadow more soft spoken people, which is something I'm actively trying to improve. But yeah, I mean, dude, it's, it works, it's it totally works, fine because you're here to share your story. And that's where we, that's what we were interested in. That's why we were so, yeah. mm. so into it, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot again. And yeah, I hope everybody liked this episode. Uh, make sure you let us know what you thought about this in the comments section and we'll be dropping we're going to be dropping your uh links everywhere <laughs> in the description oh, in the comments sweet. so they can follow you and they can find you so yeah any any last words that sounds too bad but <laughs> anything no, just, you guys want to say me. it was great awesome cool. awesome then cool take care see everybody yeah we'll see you in the next one see ya bye bye see you guys